worst one. That's worse I'll than hate the it. Oh, I, I are mean, we live? It, it, yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Amazing. It, 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 Why? It, what happened? It, it's the TV static sausage that everyone asked for. <sighs> I gotta message Bosco real fast. Oh snap. Zero out of five, Mark Ruffalo's. Secret. Watch this be the one stream he like comes in on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Watch hey, hello these everybody! Unexpectables thing. Watch these oh. unexpectable. Oh, he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hello everybody! Welcome to the Unexpectables two. We Ooh. we you may notice that things are a little bit different today. Uh, because Monty's Shout. internet exploded. <laughs> Not Pretty only did it explode, it wasn't my internet, it was literally the neighborhood's internet. The, the whole neighborhood's the internet whole exploded. Internet. It is the whole internet that got broken, More and they the whole the internet. Crowd. I Someone did, yeah. I kept downloading, and I didn't heed uh, Zito telling me to stop all the downloading, and this is did what Did you download happened. a car, Monty? Listen, it was a really nice car. I'm not oh, going to describe it because it. Bosco's here and I'm scared. <laughs> Why would I tell you? Help computer. You gotta help computer, Monty. Help computer. What did G.I. Uh, Joe teach us, Monty? Don't... I don't know. Monty, got a couple games one, on it. <laughs> Monty, I only want to know one question. Uh-huh. This gorgeous car that you're talking about. Oh, shut up. Go away. Go well, away. What is it, Monty? How, Monty no, 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 I need to know. No. Hold on. How large were the rims? 13. 13 what? <laughs> Inches. Whoa. Are you driving a Hot Wheels car? <laughs> All right. Well, wow, cloud cars wheels? are in this year, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Monty, I'm sorry. You have to do with I love, I love, I love the fact. Hawk. No, Ford shut Hawk your face. I love the fact that everyone's like, try and find a way so we can stream and play today. And the moment I do, <laughs> immediately I'm bullied. <laughs> That's no, how Monty, you know you're in for Monty, good time. Monty, listen, listen, listen. I understand. I too know the capabilities of the Ford Honk. Fair enough. For, for a Bikes brief explanation. Have bigger ribs than 13 inches, uh, Monty. I am currently experiencing what could be described as an internet nightmare. Um, my service is currently. Basically, they have to send a maintenance person in, like, the big maintenance people in to, like, go into, like, the box that's outside to fix things. And they can't do that. They have to do it within three days. So, unfortunately, it means I'm currently actually at my good friend Shay's. Um, I'm in her basement at the moment using her internet to stream. So, huge shout out to Shay, who is also known as Fanfur. Seeks no attention. Um, she's... Her and her family have thrown me a really nice bone, and I very much appreciate it because, yeah. Hey, Monty. Yeah. Hi. Um. So, mm -hmm. just wanted to let you know that that bullying thing. Now you know how I feel every day of my life. No one oh, bullies shut. you. Bob. Oh, shut up. <laughs> There's everyone is so mean to me, and You've now you never know what been it feels like in your life. Actually, actually, while we're on the subject of being no. mean to me, how about you tell everybody where they can find you, Monty? Uh, you can find me in Shay's basement. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Um, you can actually find me at Monty Glue uh, on Twitter and uh, twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Because of this internet fiasco, there's probably not going to be a stream tomorrow unless they fix it between now and then. Um, I might do art commissions tomorrow instead. I'll see how I feel. Um, but you can generally find me on Twitter. That's where I'll probably be announcing things. Um, I'm hoping that the internet comes back by Sunday because I want to get back into Majora's Mask. I uploaded the most recent episode. The reason it took so long is because of this internet problem. Um, so I'm hoping we're going to Great Bay, I think, next, uh, in Majora's <laughs> Mask. And then I'm hoping to get back into Dungeon of the Mad Mage. That'd be great, but I'm not, I'm not banking on it. Um... But yeah, keep posted. I also did a really totally not microaggression filled Mario Kart stream recently where I did not make fun of New York, despite what Zito and Gaijin may say it is a lie and don't believe them. That's it for uh, me. You know, I, I, I was about to I was about to do commission work that night, but then I had to I had to stop everything just to see what was going on. And uh, oh, boy. Hmm. I love instigation. Did, did, did you Speaking know? Did you know? Did you know that uh, that uh, New Vegas is a place? Yeah, it's right by Old Vegas. Same, same as the Old Vegas. Speaking yep. of the Old Vegas, Zito, where can they find your New York ass? You can find me over at twitch.tv slash Zito uh, and CZ Backlash on Twitter. 
where I have gotten back into the uh, into the jive of just doing nothing but indie games. Uh, I actually have been doing a lot more art recently. Uh, I finally did that thing I said I was going to do, uh, where I'm merging my my silly little projects all into one Patreon. So uh, the Patreon has received a little bit of a tier change. Nothing's really like all that changed that much, unless you are there for the comic or if you're there for the uh, for the homebrew stuff. They now have separate tiers. So if you want to support Bout. Or if you want to support the uh, homebrew stuff, they now have their own separate stuff. And the $25 tier now has a dual meaning, because now it's like, oh, you like all of the stuff I'm doing? Here, take this tier. So, thank you all for supporting that, who actually have. I, I was very dead set afraid that that might screw over some people, but everyone seemed genuinely, like, positive towards it. So, thanks for that. Oh, and by the way, Aloysius Volume 2 now went from 20 to 30 races, so that'll be fun. Speaking... Speaking of being genuinely positive, Mark Allen Jr., where can they find you? Wow, oh, gross. I didn't like that transition. Um, you can find me on Twitter.com at Mark Allen Jr., <clears throat> here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming, and you can follow the adventures of my fat, sleepy cat, Bunny, on Instagram at chonk for life um, Things are kind of weird right now. I'm dealing with some audio issues. Um, we've had uh, some minor hiccups in scheduling. Uh, we did not play Sonic yesterday, in fact... I spent six hours making a, a song from scratch. Uh, and I woke up this morning and spent six more hours working on it. And it's gross and disgusting and hilarious, and I love it. Um, and I look forward to being able to share that later. If you like, like, mid-2000s happy hardcore, that's what it sounds like. And it's hilarious, and I love it. Um, no stream tomorrow. Uh, I'm trying to get this tech issue resolved. And also, I'm going to my local game store to play the Digimon trading card game with some people because I'm a nerd. nerd. Uh, you have a local so, scene, I hate you. I know, I know. And it's Connor's fault that I bought all these cards, so I have to use them. I <laughs> bought packs the other day, <laughs> Children's too. cardboard. Yeah, I'm gonna play with them on motorcycles, Zito. So, you know. Laughs, laughs and magic, am I right, Gaijin? I still Man, have we gotta my play magic sometime. cards too, dude. Cries, cries, cries in ca children's cardboard. I almost bought a commander deck the other day, and it's, it changed my mind. It's it's bad because I'm crying in child's cardboard and child's plastic. But hey, you know. <laughs> hey, speaking of uh, Japanese inspired games and things, it, Gaijin Goomba, where can they find you? Nobody talked about that, Bosco. There was no one who talked about anything of a weebish nature. D Digimon is definitely weebish. Not really, when you think about yeah. it. Where was it made? Gaijin, you have a you have a oh, magic deck Sweden. that's nothing but fucking ninjas, please. <laughs> I have two now, Zito. Oh, whose fault is that? <laughs> Actually I'm working I, I might have a third. Anyway, you can find me Twitch on TV slash Gaijin Goomba. Big huge ass announcement. Uh first of all, I have a almost half hour long video breaking down every goddamn orc clan in 40k and where it has possibly come from when it comes to british culture please watch that this saturday i am going fucking insane finishing it uh because after that i'm taking september off uh i will still be streaming in fact i will probably be streaming more in september than ever before but i will be taking uh video production i will take I'm taking a video production break uh, throughout September. Uh, for those of you who are patrons, I have frozen the month. You should not be charged. If you are charged, please let me know. Um, I, Based on what may happen on my birth... Oh, by the way, my birthday's coming up. Uh, technically, birthday's next Happy Monday. Birthday. I will be having a big uh, birthday stream next Tuesday. It will probably just be a big-ass build stream because I have many things that I want to build. Um... Oh, man, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of, Zito, you know, there's a lot of good indie games that are either have already yeah, come out you, or are you, coming you, out. You fucking know my plight now, and you fucking deal with it just like me. By having fun and playing all the fun games for people that yes, give a shit about making games. <laughs> aggressively have fun about it. What the fuck? I will have very much fun. Uh, I still haven't touched a Gunfire Reborn's update yet, and I'm kind of jonesing for that. But mm. I, I just got done streaming um, Gravity Circuit. At least the demo for that. Good, good, good game. Uh, and then there's X Zodiac, which is basically what Star Fox should have been. Amazing. Uh, and yeah, I've, I'm going to be very, very active in September for streaming. Just not so much on the videos. Gaiden, so, Gaiden. Yeah. Play Midnight yeah. Fight Express. 
Did you oh, guys that? did you guys see the destroy all monsters melee spiritual successor? The Giga Bash one? Yeah. Dude, yep. you're late to the game on that yep, one. We got I know. that. <laughs> Uh, I've, I, I'm sad there's not more story because I want more story from that silly, silly game. You can't block my woolly. It's impossible. <laughs> no, I can't, you cheap bastard. Mm, that sounds like salt. I will throw pee pee at you, I swear. Uh, whoa, context. Whoa, whoa. I know. Delicious. So I'm going to try to get this back into some semblance of a track. <laughs> please please speaking do. Of, <laughs> speaking of whatever the heck that was, uh, Connor Devil, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, be sure to check out my DMs Guild. We got uh, some Treasure Under Conclave uh, in production right now. That'll be out uh, whenever it is finished. Trust me. Uh, that's all I really got for this week. I started playing Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, you uh, did. Yeah. Man, what a what a what a very very cool game and and the PlayStation 4 version is just absolutely breathtaking. Ooh, it's gorgeous. How many lizards you got? Uh 10. I nice. Think? He's gotten several. He's been You're not as feverish about it as Shay. Shay was like adamant that all lizards had to die in that game. It was actually <laughs> <lizards>. frightening. <laughs> You gotta yeah. get your nondescript lady friend back. Mono, yeah. 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 And, and she, Agro is best she, video game horse. Horse, yeah. no one at me at that. Agro is best video game horse. She Not. of dubious yes, relation. He is. <laughs> Who Sorry. are you uh, going to suggest is better, Gaijin? Um, Torrent. No. Torrent's not a horse. He's a goat. <laughs> Hard Connor, horse. Connor, you have Connor, you have six minutes. I'm yeah, sorry, Connor. Connor. Please continue. All right. Sorry. Well, well, here we go because we've we've got kind of a a largish announcement. I mentioned it on Gateway, but uh, today is the last day that the code Unexpectables exclamation point will be active for <sighs> Die Hard Dice. Mm. Uh, there's sort of a bit of a transitional period thing happening here. Uh, we'll, we'll get you more info when we've got it, but for right now, uh, if you want to get your Die Hard Dice with the code Unexpectables exclamation point, today is your last chance, uh, the, the 31st of August. Uh, by the time you're hearing this on YouTube, this code will be inactive. Sorry, guys. Uh, and we will have more updates for you soon. Check out our Twitter. Another, another point of reference to is that Diana is leaving Die Hard Dice as well, which is kind of why this transitional period is somewhat occurring. Um, so Diana, wherever you go, we love you. Thank you so much. You've been amazing to us. You've put mm. up with our hijinks a lot. Um, we did, I know I retweeted Diana's farewell message, um, I feel like we, maybe we should on the Unexpectables Twitter, so you guys can send Diana well wishes, cause she was nothing but amazing to work with, honestly, like, she was really yep. incredible, mm -hmm. and wherever she goes, we only wish the best, because she was, yeah, she's very nice to us, she was very good to us as well. Even though we got her in trouble with production, or delivery, or whatever it was, <laughs> our, sorry, <laughs> Our bad. <laughs> but, I just uh, I just retweeted the uh, her her farewell tweet, so yeah. so go ahead and show her some love from all of us here at the Unexpectables. Mm -hmm. And we we've been uh, we can't talk about obviously because it's a lot of stuff that's kind of up in the air, but we do have some new people. Um, who we are speaking with now going forward, um, and we may talk about them more in the future. One of them has a very ironic name. <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> hoping we get to talk about them, but um, we do. You know, we still love Die Hard Dice. We're still going to use Die Hard Dice because they're good. Um, but for now, uh, we're kind of in a transitional period. So if anybody asks about the code, just let them know that we don't have one. We should hopefully have something soonish, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 where can they find Bosco? Oh yeah, where can they find Bosco? Uh, you can find me on <clears throat> Instagram and Twitter at Ed Bosco VA, and ah, also at Twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco. Also check out Whole Soul Sa What's the word? Soul Hackers Two. I'm in the thing. I'm ready hey. to go play it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. 
It's a Shin Megami Tensei game, so you, you weeb should love it. Don't fucking call me out like that. I'm just saying. All right. Well, uh, I gotta thank the people who give us our bits and subs here. We've got... <laughs> we got... Ex Machinus, thank you for the 20 months of Prime. King Cat Goblin, thank you for the gift sub. Z the Mediocre, thank you for the 28 months of Prime. DRK Ganon, thank you for the 28 months of Prime. Let's hope Roll20 is kind to you all tonight. <laughs> Corin Solist, thank you for the 21 months. Finally, the magic number, 21. 21. King Cat Goblin, thank you for the 100 bits. Gaius the One Punch Goat. Zilban, okay. thank you for the 17 months of Prime. Uh, can't wait to see where they go now. Dip and Bipples, thank you for the 13 months. Corin Solist, <laughs> thank you for the 50 bits. Uh, now that that's out of the way, I got good news. I got my job offer email earlier. Hey, nice. Nice. Dip and Bipples, thank you for the uh, 100 bits as well. Hi, Monty. Uh, Hi, Dip and Bipples. I hope school's going good for you and you're slowly becoming a nurse. Yeah. Shadow Flare 8, thank you for the 29 months. The Nargakuga Tamer, thank you for the 500 bits. King Cat Goblin, thank you for gifting another sub to the community. Level 1 Eevee, thank you for the 13 months. Bosco is almost as stinky as Mark. Wow. I like how the music cut out right there. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah that, that, that really was a really solid <laughs> statement. Yeah. You can almost hear the... Listen, man, <laughs> I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Mark being stinkier. I, I, that's an upgrade for me. I'm glad I'm moving up the chain. There you go. Soon I'll be clean. Rar Hockey Dude, thank you for the 100 bits. Gaijin, started learning Japanese today. Have any advice? Uh, Use it as often as possible in your day-to-day -day life. Ah, there you go. And tell her, thank you for the 18 months of Prime. I got nothing clever to say. RC Wheeler, thank you for the 28 months. Stretchy412, thank you for the 25 months of Prime. Hope all is going well. Keep up the wonderful content. Let's wish for no more ones than usual from Mark. The Corvo Aviation Center. Thank you for the 21 months. Woo! Uh, Love that name. Kitty Cat Gundam. Thank you for the six months. Kuro Okami. Thank you for the 23 months. It's time. It's time. It's time. Time to put off those afternoon chores and listen to some of our favorite nerds play D&D. King Cat Goblin. Thank you for yet another gifted sub. The Corbo Aviation Center. Thank you for the five gifted subs to the community. Stop making me miss Remy. Daluna thirteen. Thank you for the twenty-seven months. Twenty-seven. My favorite group. Uh, twenty-seven months of my favorite group. Love you all. Resmu. Thank you for the eleven thousand five hundred fifteen bits. <laughs> what a That's number! That's a very specific number. Uh, what a number. Uh, hey all, been a while since I started catching up. The gang just entered the elemental plane of Earth. Take this small bit of kindness as a token of my gratitude. Love you guys. I hope to catch up soon to see you all live. Uh, and rip Badger Panic. I miss uh, my cheesehead heart misses him already. Zorns, Zorns everywhere. They were in the last episode, so, you know. Hey. Yeah. Gorn, thank you for the 100 bits. Nice one, Unexpectables. You started streaming while I was watching uh, Quentin's new long video of Sam and Cat. Is that like S Sam and Max? I have no idea. Oh. Zib, 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 thank you for the 100 <laughs> bits. Uh, Wednesday time, Monty, I hold you responsible for my latest 14 fishing binge. Don't blame me. Blame my uh, uh, La laughs, laughs in shark mount. You'll never guess who it is. It's Pop Tart Depression with the 500 bits. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I tested positive for COVID on Monday. I really oh, need to pick oh, me up for the new oh. episode. My favorite D and D show. Hope you I get hope well you soon. Good. Pop Tart Depression. Get like orange juice. Legitimately, like drink orange juice. It helps if you're able to. If you're not allergic or you have a stomach condition, drink lots of vitamin C. It helps a lot. Yeah, that drink 300% of your daily vitamin C in one I, go. Unfortunately, most people don't have, ac have access to Happy Planet unless you live in the Vancouver or general BC area, but get some vitamin C in your body. There you go. Cuban Dragon, thank you for the uh, uh, 26 months of Prime. Can't wait to meet the rest of the Ocean Lords. Morthrandor, thank you for the 200 bits. Did someone say Digimon? Also, happy session. I can't wait to see what happens. I Greasy. have the seed on. on my yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's fun. Greasy X Spoon, thank you for the 29 months. 
Solar Misfit, thank you for the eight months of Prime. Eight months, fun fact, eighth level is the level that wizards gain access to the spell gun. Uh, Hulksternator, thank you for these 17 months. It's Wednesday, the Unexpectables are live, and my Steam Deck has arrived. It's a good day. Ooh. Protoss 103. Online. Thank you for the one or the 10 bits. Time for the Unexpectables 2. Can't wait to see what happens tonight. Dusty Bone, thank you for the 20 months. Lost Me the Robot, thank you for the 25 months. Starting my vacation with some Unexpectables. Hope everyone is good today. King Cat Goblin, thank you for the additional gifted sub. Uh, and another one. Emerald Bandit, thank you for the 24 months. It's been two years of subscription and two plus years of adventure. Skyrim Luigi, thank you for the eight months. Catching you guys live again. Uh, because I've been busy and I can't wait for the rush of watching live. Gorilla with a Glock, thank you for the 16 months. Excited about tonight. You guys beat the brakes off my big sad. Appreciate y'all lots. Game Master Anth, thank you for the 28 months. A subversary? Well, this is unexpected. Ox Factor, thank you for the 22 months of Prime. Hey guys, good luck tonight. I might get started on a couple of music tracks for the new campaign soon. Ooh. Uh, Andoror the Insane, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Books are bought. Die Hard Dice orders are inbound, and I need to bribe slash ask my family if they want to play a one-shot. Lucky me with the promo code. Defang Shadow, thank you for the 12 months. Schlorbo McMilpy, thank you for the six bits. Take these bits as I might as I might be hijacking my sleep schedule. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kane Time, thank you for the five subs gifted to the community. Mini Ender, thank you for the 19 months. Been a while. My Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Between Xenoblade Chronicles 3, my brother making me watch Stargate SG-1 and my best friend getting married. Shoutouts to James and Hannah. I've been watching the VODs until tonight. Ooh. Congratulations to them. Crabius the Great Crabber, thank you for the 29 months. King Cat Goblin, thank you for the additional gifted sub. Shadaz, thank you for the 23 months. Dragon Alchemist, thank you for the 28 months. The Holy Carp, thank you for the 13 months. Dip and Bipples, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, Lord Commissar Manslaughter, thank you for the 5 bits. Discotech Priest, thank you for the 26 months. Uh, Dip and Bibbles, thank you for the 100 additional bits. Morth Randor, thank you for the 100 bits. Arch Majos Dragon, thank you for the 295 bits. Paz and Quiet, thank you for the 1400 bits. Dice Goblin Supreme, thank you for the 100 bits. True Lord Darkness, thank you for the 19 months. Elf Lord 89, thank you for the 24 months. That Panda Guy, thank you for the sub. Seriously Surreal Serial, thank you for the 515 bits. Uh, Dr. Caliban, thank you for the 26 months. That that guy in the towel, Hezekiah, thank you for the 200 bits. Game Master Anth, thank you for the 100 bits. And Metal Gear Blaze, thank you for the 100 bits. That's a name. First time chatter, too. Da, 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 da. All right, Monty, do the... Uh... Do the thing. Well, yeah, you gotta do oh, the wait. intro. Of it. Oh, wait. I can't. Show to a fucking can't. mate. Yeah. <sighs> I gotta I get do it. Bosco, my internet sucks. Which means. <laughs> That's not what I was. What? Which means I gotta, I gotta mute the Unexpectables tab now. Uh oh. All right. Here we go. I hope you're all ready to get into tonight's episode of The Unexpectables 2. Come.
Ready? Are we good we to go? did it. Yeah. Okay. When last we left our adventures, Iskan Seat Lolly, Milo Brightbeam, Gaius Agony, Kai Valentinius, and Otho Valentinius. Second, I just gotta adjust the audio a little bit here. The party has arrived in the great port city Martorallo. After meeting with Oslomir Harland, the party discovered the bead of Hoketh they're hunting has been lost in a wreckage in the sea dragon's bones. Guiding them on their way, Ozlemir provided the party with letters of recommendation to the other ocean lords in hope that they could provide a ship and an experienced captain to take them to the treacherous trek of ocean. After meeting with the merchant lord Coleco of Coin, the party decided to head to the docks proper to seek out ocean lord Winona Odes. Now, as the party makes their way to the busiest and most populated sector of Martorallo, we return to the Unexpectables. I forgot about the baby. I'm going to remove the baby now. <laughs> remove baby. Wow, context. <laughs> I will take a hammer and remove the baby. For those who are wondering, uh, the audio we are playing on the live stream has a baby crying in it, and I got rid of it. I, I think it's okay. Babies happen. I preferred it with no context. I thought it was better. All right. So as you guys have made your way away from Coleco's trading market, the even scales, you are now making your way into the docks district proper. And very quickly, you discover that the docks district itself is very crammed and very crowded, shoulder to shoulder, people moving about, people carrying large tunas over their shoulders, carts and wagons making their way through, kind of plowing through the individuals who have to kind of step aside to let them through. You hear sailors barking orders at each other. And what's interesting is it's almost impossible to tell where the land ends and the ocean begins. It feels as if the dock districts is just completely built ab above water. The floor beneath your feet is constantly wood. And you can see through the cracks in the ground, sloshing waters and kind of rough rocks with mussels and barnacles growing on it as you make your way through. Winterwit is still perched above your head, Milo, kind of clinging to your curly golden hair. Uh, kind of looking over the sea of people, and you can see various ships, you know, to fast sailing vessels with large and beautiful sails, to touring vessels meant more for rich folk to kind of see about the sights, currently moored on docks with amble crews smoking pipes and conversing with others. Seagulls flocked in these massive swarms, bombarding down on fishermen, bringing in their catches. Pelicans rest on sort of these side, uh, the sides of buildings with these large nests kind of yawning their massive mouths. You, it is a barrage of people moving about, less formulated as the shopping district, much more chaos, much more work. Uh, and you are there, and what do you guys do? Huh. Uh, so, um, also. Do you know all of the ocean lords? Well, not... I've... I've met most of them. I... not really... Not really on a... business relationship with them. My... my father being an ocean lord. We're in the same circles, but, you know, it's... it's kind of... kind of a matter of... you know... like knowing people that your father works with. It's... it's sort of a situation like that. Milo thinks to himself, <laughs> his father, and the untold, uh, holy, possible horrors that he works with. <laughs> Real, biblically realistic angel. <laughs> and Solar. Solar's just there with a coffee mug that says, world's most okayest dad, with a question mark. It's got, it's got it just says, world's around dad. The fucking, uh, around world's dad. <laughs> I'm not sure I know exactly what that's like, but I'll do my best. Oh, um, right. My apologies. Well, it's nothing to apologize for. I just have no idea what that would 
you like. It, basically, <laughs> there's a big difference between who you know for business and who you know as someone you want to talk to. I, I, I guess I still don't know much about that because everyone that my mom and I did business with, well, we, we liked them all the time. You, you know what? Let's just let's just find where we need to get going. Otherwise, we're going to be here for a while. Right. We need to find the ferry that will take us to her ship. We may need to ask for directions, Winterwit says. Yes, this city can be a labyrinth at certain times. And Winona is not known for habitual behavior. That is also true. Shall we, uh, ask about then? I, I guess that's the best thing to do at the moment. We'll like probably... F no, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I, 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 I'm just like, I imagine Gaius is like near a fish, a, a fishmonger, just like poking at a display monkfish, just like, it's like pudding with eyes. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a halibut, like a olive fish with like two eyes on one side and like the, the fisherman who's got just, his mouth is lost and just a sea of beards just kind of goes, caught it fresh this morning. It's like poke him and you, like Gaius is just like, oh. You poke it a couple times and it just starts like violently flopping, kind of almost leaping outside of the net, kind of freaks you out a little bit. It enters a fucking like defensive stance ready to punch it. <laughs> it's lively, I told you it was fresh. That's five silver if you want the whole fish. If I wasn't, if we weren't on some sort of, if we weren't trying to look for something, sir, I would have gladly paid it down. By the ah, way. Well, what are you what are you looking for? Maybe I got I got some nice tuna. I got a swordfish. I got plenty of sardines if you're looking for sardines. There's a fish made of swords. <laughs> hey, you want to see it? Yeah! <laughs> oh <laughs> Christ on a stick. <laughs> you watch, you oh my god, like, why do you have to ask? <laughs> the best way I can describe it, I hate to bring this up, but have you seen the gif of the guy like like from the Ghibli movie like like stretching and his shirt just explodes? Yes. <laughs> yeah. He looks like that, but like more of a gray beard, but he's that muscular. And you watch as he kinda dips behind his stall and he comes back with probably a I wanna say like a, a five foot long swordfish, and he kinda places it in front of you and kinda runs his hands down the skin. He goes, and this one's dead. And a part of it, if it starts flopping around, it can break a man's leg. But this one is quite the beauty. I'll sell it to you for two gold. The ocean is a terrifying but majestic place. You are very right on that, young man. Well, I, well, I will give you something in return for catching such a beast. I give him the two gold anyway. I don't want the fish. I do want information, though. Sure thing. I only know about the docks, though. Don't go mainland very often. Oh, that's fine. What we're searching for is on the docks. Well, let's hear it then. We're looking for the... <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. We're looking for the Ocean Lord. You're gonna have to be more specific. Uh, we are looking for the ferry that will take us to Winona Odez's ship. Ah, the Sea Witch, huh? Uh, you're gonna want to head down to the blue docks. Just turn left when you get- he gives you directions. He basically just gives you a whole list of directions. <laughs> but I need to know the directions. Uh, guy has heard Sea Witch and he's just like, I'm oh! I'm looking for some sailors. Have you seen <laughs> sailors. any sailors? God damn it. <laughs> hey mister, you want to wrestle? Her, um, her ferryman is a, is a rather thin bronze dragonborn woman. You can miss her. Oh, well, thank you. I'll of course. To, I'll be back to admire your catch. All of this is alien to me, but I love every inch of it. He takes his hat and he tips it very politely and gives you, you, you can't see his smile, but the hair is shift and kind of, you can, you can kind of see the smile. <laughs> the beardly <laughs> shadow of a smile. God, yeah. guys, guys Come on, gang, let's like... go to a place where sailors hang out. Sailors? I almost took a sip. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys follow the directions given to you by the friendly fisherman, um, you see 
like floating restaurants, like floating establishments, boats that are stores. You see, um, you know, kids walking around with kind of boxes or kind of balancing on their heads and are selling, um, you know, tobacco for, you know, the pipes of the sailors. You see kids running around selling these sort of court vials of drink that they're selling to it appears to be tourists or individuals kind of layovering. And you see, again, quite the cast of characters. You see, you know, orcs, you see, um, like, Kenku, you see Tabaxi, you see um, lizard folk, none that you recognize, actually, Iskan. Um, all manner of different beings kind of moving about. You see exotic beasts, these large lizard with, with fanged faces. You see um, flying monkeys set in cages and snakes of all different colors being sold in glass boxes out of a shop. It is pure chaos. You see fruits as well, exotic fruits, exotic you know, spices and meats and all manner of things. Fabrics flapping in the breeze of various colors and various makes. Eventually, your feet take you to where the dock actually kind of spreads out almost like fingers over the water. It's almost like a tree. There's like the 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 trunk is sort of the main of the dock area, the crowds where the crowds gather and the shops exist. And then it kind of splits out into branches where shops become boats. And now you're on the fingers, which become thinner, more experienced um, docks for those who live near water. It's as you expect that kind of spiral out to various different vessels of various different sizes. You can see as you kind of walk along the blue dock, which is marked due to the posts being painted blue on the top, you walk and you can currently see what appears to be a, a dwarf who is just stuntanned beyond belief, currently lugging in these large crab, uh, crab traps filled with crustaceans kind of make your way back there. You see currently what looks to be a cabin boy stitching together rope, um, practicing his knots with a with a teacher. And eventually you do see who was described to you, a very thin, lithe-looking, uh, bronze dragonborn woman currently smoking on a pipe as well. Uh, she has like a tricorn hat with a large plumed feather coming out of it. She's wearing a very, very nice sort of debonair looking loose dress shirt with a very loose cravat uh, and sort of long black slacks that come down to her feet, uh, to which her feet have essentially like dragonborn sandals is the best way to describe it. There are these sort of lashed sandals that have a backing on the back. Uh, and there's a sword at her side, specifically a saber, not too dissimilar to yours, Otho. And she seems to be idly kind of sucking back on the tobacco and blowing. Oh my god, I never want to leave this place. <laughs> yeah, uh, pardon me, ma'am. Oh, yes, on, question? Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, Connor. No, ask, ask your question first, Bosco. Uh, are there any ships with any recognizable flags on them or no flags at all? There is one ship, and it is. it makes sense for where it is. In the far distance, you see a massive galleon ship, currently with its sails up, but bearing the colors of Winona Odez, which appears to be a wind sort of symbol to it. Uh, Kai's just going to tap on Otho's shoulder and point it out before he walks over to talk to the Dragonborn. Ah, we're in luck. <clears throat> Uh, excuse me, madam. I, how can I help you? She says, and she kind of taps the pipe on her leg. Well, we were looking for passage to the ship of the Ocean Lord Winona Odez. I'm afraid, sir, I don't cater to tourists. Do you have business with the Ocean Lord? Tourists? Oh, I can tell I have... land foreigners at a at a glance. <laughs> oh, 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 oh no! Did you about it to just, get these hands? Just get them all though. Just yeah. a very neutral expression <laughs> curls into a very shallow cat smile. He continues, and she goes, "That is unless." Oh, I see. You're a suitor. Is that it? Uh, she's not interested <laughs> either. Oh. He oh, rolls wow. his eyes and reaches into his pouch. We couldn't dig you a hole this deep. Oh, man. We come on the recommendation of Oslamir Harland, madam. 
Oslo Mune. May I see the oh, seal? Sh- I I hand her the letter. She takes it. My apologies for the assumptions. You are forgiven. People are very curious about magic, especially foreigners, so they tend to want to pry into her affairs. And, of course, the latter I mentioned as well. Um, You are traveling with quite the entourage. Are all of you going? I believe we are, yes. Good. Everyone get aboard, and she steps off into what appears to be a very small sailboat. Okay. Oh, guys, it has... on cloud nine right now. <laughs> uh, it seems to have, like, it's kind of like a rowboat mixed with a sailboat, so it's not, like, big enough. Like, there's no below deck, I guess, if that makes sense. It's that mm. small, but it, it works as a sailboat, specifically. Would uh, say it's, and... like, sized like a riverboat? More or less, yeah. Um, but it has enough to... It probably could fit about eight people, but for you guys, you fit very comfortably. Mm. Uh, as you head out, though, uh, Winterwit kind of sits atop one of the posts of the dock and goes, I will wait here until your return. Very well. Do you not like the water? I Would you love... Remember? I love the water, but again, I my presence in front of an ocean lord may got her some... Disdain, let's say as much as that. As I can work as the eyes of Ozemir Harland and many of the Ocean Lords, but should keep their business private, respectfully. That's understandable. Uh, Monty, quick question. So we're going to have this boat to ourselves? Uh, no, currently the fairy woman is currently manning it. Oh, okay. Yeah. There is a fairy person. Got it. And as she kind of gets on, she turns to all of you and goes, When I tell you to duck... Be sure to duck. All right. Very well. You watch as she kind of unloads the rigging, pulls up the anchor, and kind of mans the rudder, and, you know, she begins to sail out. Um, She does yell out duck as the sail pole actually swings across. I would like everyone to make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Money, I'm three foot nothing. Do I need to? No, you're fine. (laughs) Oh, Anyone who's larger, though, and especially Iskan, um, <laughs> you guys need to roll it. To, well, you're tall. I'm sorry. Wait, it was a natural de- one! <laughs> Iskan and Kai are the same height! <laughs> Nyan. I just want to you say, said a- I appreciate all the people who, in their comments and bit drops today, said, I hope Mark doesn't roll any ones, because that's the first time anyone said anything in several sessions, and this is my first nat <laughs> one. Yeah, so cool. say. <laughs> roll to me was like, oh, right. <laughs> That's going to be a soft 20. <laughs> nice. Oh, so guys. Oh, 14. no, sorry. Guys already rolled. Oh. All right. Um, <laughs> Kai and Otho, you're, you're actually pretty used to this. It makes sense. You've been on boats several times. You're from here. It makes sense. Um, Gaius, you get clonked once or, twice, uh, once or twice in the side of the head. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's like battle... But it kind of comes out of nowhere. Eastcan, you have the worst time. Every time this woman yells duck, it's like your fight or flight response kicks off because <laughs> you get walloped like two or three times and it hurts. Anyone who's sailed before knows that that, that hurts. It is like a mm-hmm. baseball bat to the head. Yep. Um, so you're a little dazed as the ship kind of makes its way out. A few times during the venture, another sailor comes in with the ship and almost knocks into your own ship, almost making your heart skip a beat. And you watch as the fairy woman goes, your mother didn't teach you how to drive. And like they start kind of yelling at each other until eventually they part. And eventually you make your way out into open sea where the depth is actually not incredibly deep. You can actually see the bottom of the uh, the crystal clear oceans. You can see the various crabs and the various sea stars at the bottom kind of fluttering about as the shadow of your boat kind of coasts over the rippling waters. And the closer you get, the more intense the size of this ship becomes. Money, I have a very silly question. Mm-hmm. How long? How long is this voyage taking? It's not going to take too long. Okay, I was I was going to ask if I could do a, a quick fish to cook up something later, but don't no worries. I'll, I'll allow it with disadvantage because you are moving really fast. See, this is why I need a spinning lure. 
or a really which you do long not have. Spear. <laughs> I don't. I don't even, Monty, it's your world. I don't know if they've been invented yet. So let me roll one more time. It is with plus four, so sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, not bad. You catch a, like a bream, actually, like a, probably a uh, I'm just to say five inch bream. I will wrap Some that up and. Uh, would would that be able to feed us or some yeah, of us? Yeah, I'd say that's I'd say that's two rations. Oh, cool! I will wrap that up then and cook it later. Mm -hmm. It will uh, spoil quickly, so you have to eat it pretty quick. Connor, Otho in particular would notice that the second they hit the water, and while they're on the water, it's the most relaxed you've seen Kai since you've gotten to this city. Now. Iskan appears to have completely lost track <laughs> of everything, <laughs> and every time well, someone this is the greatest. Gone, he turns in the opposite direction in which the mast is coming. Oh, well, in, sorry, in that case, Money, can I flash fry this thing somehow? Um, probably not on the boat. Okay. It's kind of, yeah, you're kind of shoulder to shoulder <laughs> in here. Beam of <laughs> sun just pierces the boat. I do it! I don't test me! I do it if I had the ability! <laughs> the guy is just, like, fucking, like, leans in while East Cash is, like, fetal positioned in the middle of the boat, just, like, grabs him by the shoulders. Isn't this the greatest?! <laughs> No. So you guys get closer to the Ocean Lord's ship. It is a massive vessel. Neat. Um, this ship could easily house 500 men. Um, it has two levels of cannons to it, and just the most complicated and large rigging you've ever, ever seen. Uh, the front of it seems to have almost like a sea serpent look to it, but it's kind of like not defined if that makes sense like the figurehead is like a weird sea snake but it's all very kind of blurry and almost foggy in intentionally um and you can see mixed in sort of like these swirling folds are, are you know large fish kind of carved into the wood um it is a very nice vessel but it is definitely looks to be a very used vessel for sure the anchor chain is probably bigger than you know you guys are thick it is massive. Uh, and eventually the um, the fairy woman kind of pulls in the sail and folds it up and kind of grabs onto what appears to be um, a wooden set of like ladder that kind of has naturally been built into the side of the boat. Uh, and she kind of holds onto that, stopping the boat and kind of grabs some chains and kind of links it to the side on both ends, kind of squeezing between you all. And as she stands at the back of the ship, she goes, Well, good luck on your business. Milo tries to do some sort of salute and fails terribly. <laughs> mm. <sighs> up, up the ladder we go, then. Okay. Oh, oh, it's a long way. Yeah, you should, mm. You're seeing stars, <laughs> Iskan. <laughs> <laughs> to your feet, Mr. Seat Lolly, we are at our destination. Yeah, okay. The climb takes a while. It is a long climb. Um, yeah, honestly, you... What a thrill. As you guys slowly make your way up, eventually uh, reaching the top of the, the sort of the um, banister, as you get up top, you see there's a few people wandering around, kind of talking... Um, you see one young guy, like, probably, like, 20s, just currently just mopping a section of the deck. Um, there are other people talking about the rigging. You hear people like, oh, I have to replace this one. It's going to be, you know, just kind of general chatter. No one seems to really take notice of, of you as you, um, board the ship. Cool. Just looking man. Man, a, a, a fucking, a, a little ferry and a fucking, like, exercise up the fucking gunship or galleon, whichever one you're going to describe this one as, Monty. God, why would Gaius leave here? It is a massive <laughs> ship. Like, it is huge. Yeah, that's why I was like, all right, so the only way to uh, to figure this out is, like, it's either a gunship or a galleon. Or, like, a super galleon. I would say this is easily a warship, for sure. Fuck yeah. It's a Constellation class star cruiser. Would it be akin in size to like a modern battleship? Um, probably not that big, but <laughs> it is definitely like a larger wooden vessel for sure. It's kind of like the Queen Anne's Revenge plus. Jesus. 
how, how far off of the docks would you say we are? Like, if we look back towards the docks, how far um, are they appear? Your travel did take a bit because you had, to, you had to weave between other ships, which was rather annoying. Um, the sail took maybe about ten minutes tops. Um, so you can still see Martorello's docks from here. It's just kind of undefined. You can see the ships and whatnot, but you can't really... It's kind of blocking the rest of the city in a way. But you can absolutely see Har Ozmir Harlan's house as it's on the crest of the ocean's pinnacle, this large rock formation that kind of stands above everything. Uh, and to the right, as you kind of trail across the coastline, you can see a less impressive pinnacle uh, of which has a very large lighthouse set on it. Um, that is currently, despite it being daytime, sharing and shining some light out over the ocean itself. Um, to the right of that, you can see the wooden houses that you'd noticed on your way in, as well as another dark, ki uh, another dark, oh my god, another dock kind of sequestered away with a lot of ships on the water um, that don't appear to be vessels, but more like structures. But they're, what they are is kind of undefined. Cool. Well, suppose we should introduce ourselves. Uh, Otho, do, do you know where you're going? It's a big uh, ship. Not in the slightest, but we we'll probably find our way there. The captain's quarters is usually... And he, he'll, like, tilt his head towards the back of the ship. I was going to ask, is there any visible quarter deck? Um, oh, you have to forgive me. My, my sea knowledge is not the best. No, so, so basically it's so if you remember, it's like that area at the back of the ship where there's yes. no like layout maps and stuff and the captain's it normally in there. appears to have that, yeah, that, that room to it. Okay. Is that, do, would it be common knowledge for either Otho or I to know it's in the back? Yeah, generally the captain's quarters is in the back. Okay. Man, if I wasn't Gaius. <laughs> Man, if I wasn't Wait, what Gaius. What that mean? <laughs> if, I, if I wasn't playing Gaius right now, fuck. So, so... You... I was about to say, I think you could... You know, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I like ships too, Zito, but... Whatever. I like boats. <laughs> Listen, unfortunately, I, I am a... My family is massively into naval stuff, so th this is just... This is awesome to me. I, I come from a family of a lot of uh, seaworthy uh, folk. Yeah, I see. I don't, well, right, I guess we'll head to the back of the ship. <clears throat> okay. Let's do it. Yep. You guys shuffle your little entourage into the back of the ship and walk up to the set of double doors that stands there. The door opens up, and you see um, an orc, a rather large orc, um, currently wearing, like, a crooked chef's hat, uh, and, like, a very dirty kind of apron outfit kind of opens the door and goes, Hello? Oh, Milo's in love. <laughs> business first, business first. God. Greetings, friend. Uh, we were looking for the... Ocean Lord. Uh, would you happen to know where she is? He kind of, like, exits out the door and kind of, like, squeezes out from the doorway. And you can see behind him currently chefs moving about, as it's apparently the kitchen, which is weird. Mm. And he raises a large finger and he points up and he goes, uh, Ocean Lord Winona's always in the crow's nest. Oh, that's gonna ah. be a problem. Huh. <laughs> look up. Does the crow's nest look like it's bigger than it usually would be, or is she, or is it just like a one person, one seater? Uh it looks like it. It can hold several people, and it's also uh, intimidatingly high. <clears throat> ah. Is there any way to, uh, get her to come down? <laughs> ah, you're funny. You're serious. <laughs> God. 
No, she never she never comes down unless it's Said or to to talk to us sometimes and we're dark, so she's got no business being down. I see. I turn to the rest of the, the of the party. You feel like doing some climbing? More? Um. Okay. Above, uh, above game, crow's nests are not very big. Well, this one so is. They can be. They can fit a few people. I Deluxe am... crow's nest. Especially How much like crow's nest gonna fit? Six people, Monty. Yep. Yeah. This one definitely will. Okie dokie. The Titanic yeah, yeah. could fit four. What were you saying? Yeah, but six is a lot. I'm very slim. What are you saying, Mr. Brightbeam? Oh, I might have an idea to try and get her attention. It, it, it kind of depends, though. Um, oh, God. Oh, <laughs> wrong accent. Pebble. <laughs> you say that, but um, Iskan, oh, how, how, how far can you throw that boomerang? Uh, Monty, is the crow's nest more than 120 feet up? You're not sure. It's hard to tell. It it maybe around that point. You you'd assume. Well, see, you don't you don't need to throw it directly up, just out enough to get her attention, and then the boomerang comes back, and she's gonna look over and she's thinking, oh, well, who are these? Um, what's the t term for a, a solid bag? I, I I I don't know the sea jargon, but you get the idea. So you want me to throw it out over the ocean? Well, first. And, and, and he will poke it and cast light upon it. There, now it's a bit of a beacon. What? Okay, I guess I could give it a try. Uh, he kind of looks around to find a, a clear spot uh, okay. on the deck somewhere. So Easy enough. It's, it's a large deck, and there's not a lot of people on the boat at the moment. Cool. The uh, orc chef actually is like kind of closes the door behind him and kind of puts his hands on his hips and just kind of watches. He just he's curious now. I'll I'll give it a good throw uh, with a little bit of an uptick so it does get a little bit of height. Uh, before he does that, may I guidance his throw? Absolutely. Excellent. Do I have to, do I have to roll the throw? I'm not hitting I don't, anything. I I don't know, but I have to I have to say that I'm doing that before anything no, is I rolled. So yeah. Uh, it's up to Monty. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. What am I, I? Am I rolling or am I just throwing it? You're rolling to hit, so you got to roll boomerang, and add guidance to it. Roll. Uh, okay. Add that D four. <laughs> oh. It's wow. just one of them days. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I'll roll that D four. Actually, I realize that's only for ability score, so that wouldn't that's work. A, that's a two Sorry. for everybody who's listening at home. Yeah, and so, so is the two on the, the guidance doesn't work, so it's a two. I don't you know, know how you... I missed the air, but I did. You know when you throw a frisbee into a tree? Oh. You throw, and it gets caught in the rigging. And kind of, like, stops, clunks, and then falls all the way onto the deck, hitting a cabin boy on the head. And he's like, ah! And he falls <laughs> over. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> that was a good throw. Uh, is he gonna be all right? I'll be fine. And the cowboy oh. gets up and goes, "I'm okay." Is Sorry. There, is there a ladder on the mast? Yeah, I was about to ask. I just climb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kai's just gonna climb while they yeah. throw boomerangs. What a three! I, I mean, I'm gonna retrieve my boomerang and apologize to athletics to check. Boy. 16. Nice. Do we have to roll athletics to climb? Now, see how well you climb, I'd say. There's no climb. Or acrobatics of your so. choice. Uh, sure. Uh, I'd rather go acrobatics. Yeah, I'm likewise. Also gonna do I'm going to take a 22 then. Nice. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to jump up there. <laughs> <laughs> Spring? He's walking up there the fucking go. vertically up the no, mast. I'm just going to Gaius jump up the, the <laughs> mast. Good. I Big still. Oh, Milo, to be fair, you were wearing I'm armor. And I'm small. And you're small. Honestly, I, uh, honest, honestly, I was about to say, do we need to all stay together or can I just stay down because I'm terrified? You can stay down if you want to. Yes, please. Okay, Milo, you stay down with the chef. The rest I'm, of you, though, uh, 
each of you very effectively climb the ladder. It gets a little rickety when the boat kind of leans ever so slightly and the wind kind of rushes almost kind of trying to beat you off of the uh, off of the ladder, but you all manage to proceed at a relatively good pace. At one point, Otho, you get a little winded because it is a lot of exercise and you kind of look down and you <sighs> see how far up you are and it's kind of like <sighs> this makes your head spin. But as you proceed, Gaius, you make it up first to this sort of round donut-shaped large crow's nest, um, the middle of which the pillar, like the the mass kind of comes through it. And you can see that someone's knocked out shelves where you see uh, telescopes have been, have been placed or um, as well as other things like water bottles and, and water skins and glasses and things like that. And you can currently see as you kind of step up and stand to your full height, currently lying down on her back, arms kind of like crossed on her chest, sleeping is a young woman, probably early 20s, with just white windswept hair, blue robes, currently gently snoring at the moment. As the rest of you also at this point uh, manage to make it to the crow's nest, you see a similar sight as well. Oh my god, unfortunately this is Gaius. Kind of like, me, like, holds onto the railing as he walks along the edge. Like, doesn't like, stand completely above her, but just above her that like, he can like, just like, his voice could be heard. Excuse me. What? We're looking for the ocean lord. Her eyes crack open, and you see this woman. Oh boy. Art. New art, new art, new art. Art, 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 art. I want to imagine Milo's back down. At oh, never mind. Whoa. Hell yeah. Ooh. She rolls over, kind of resting her head on her hand as her elbow kind of pushes her up from the deck. And without opening her eyes, she takes her other hand and her pinky and just starts, you know, squeak, like kind of twisting it in her ear a bit. And she kind of yawns. She goes, who's asking? And she opens her eyes and then notices all of you and kind of looks up looking a little bit intrigued, but still a little annoyed. Well, we are. Uh, uh, for... Also, I think that's your cue. Uh, forgive our intrusion, uh... Wait, Madam. Hold, hold on. No, shut up for a second. You. And she points at you, Otho. <laughs> Do yes. <we> scowl. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need I, just like, a very scowl for me, kitty. <laughs> I, like, look from side to side, I and I go, like, <laughs> oh, you're... She makes, like, a disgusted face and kind of, like, recoils back. Oh, you're Brutus's kid, aren't you? <laughs> Guilty is charged, yeah. madam. I am Otho Valentinius. What does he want? It's not what he wants, it's what we require. Right. Right. Uh, you, uh, we were given a recommendation to you from, uh, Ocean Lord Harland. Okay, what we does Gramps want? We were wondering if we could procure a ship to retrieve something from a wreckage. He gave you a letter? I, I shuffle into my pocket and I hand it to her. Alright, as you actually pull it out, before you can hand it to her, the wind catches it, and it kind of flies around the crow's nest, eventually landing in her open hand that she was just kind of rubbing your ear with, and she kind of takes it, and at this point sits cross-legged and opens it up and kind of tosses the envelope over the side, and she begins to read it. Oh, she's cool, though. <laughs> uh, does the envelope land back on the boat? It seems to flutter off somewhere. You can't really see where it goes. Oh, she just tossed it. She doesn't give a shit. It's littered. She kind of reads it. You can see, like, her expression. Unlike Coleco or anybody else, her expression is completely neutral. Huh. She looks at you and kind of looks back. 
Huh. Interesting. You're from Eastonvale. We've just come from there, yes. <laughs> oh, you guys are crazy. I like that. Eh. Huh. Well, uh, that particular stretch of ocean is rather dangerous. Not that I don't like a challenge, but most nitwits with the helm don't know how to traverse such a dangerous place, meaning that you're probably going to want one of my better helmsmen and a sloop to get you there, huh? Well, don't all talk at once. Jeez. I'm not there. I'm sorry. Uh, that, Kai, that Kai was who's... the idea, yeah. I'll go for it. Okay. Well, hmm. Ugh. Let's see. She kind of looks back at the letter. I'm not exactly charitable. I'm we sure you can understand. You That's have... What I was... No, you go are... on. Everyone talk at once. I asked for it. You are, <laughs> you are in the business of shipbuilding, so I... He, he immediately, like, goes back and lies on her side when you say that and rolls her eyes. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Hammer and nails. Hammer and nails, Winona. <laughs> I, I, know, I know she's in charge of building ships, Monty. She is, yeah, reluctantly. I think you might have insulted her. By stating her position? Yeah, he did state my position. I don't make ships, though. That's like, the people do that. She kind of wiggles her fingers over the side. <sighs> I suppose with Eastonvale being restored, we would have shipment of wood back for more vessels, which means more sailing, which means quicker repairs. It is appealing. But, and she kind of looks at all of you, I'm not sure how much I trust you with my most skilled helmsman and a sloop, especially since, aforementioned, wood is hard to come by. So, Grandpa said I should propose a trade, and a trade I will propose. And there has been an interesting development amongst my crew, specifically in my fleet. What Go on. kind of development? One of my morons, I'll say. Red Jesse is his obnoxious name. She rolls her eyes when she says that as well. He's an idiot and stupid and shot my friend. Now, my friend didn't take that so well, and I believe it only fair that they are repaid for the transgression that applied to them. Red Jesse, who had done the abhorrent act, claims that he has a tip that will lead him to some sort of dungeon that contains magical items. I don't trust sending him because I'm sure the moment he gets the chance that weasel's going to run away from me as quickly as possible. To be honest, I think the whole thing is a trick, but, and she kind of sits back up again, if there's any chance that he's telling the truth, and he does happen to have a location with magical items, I must say I am intrigued, but I would not make him the one to look into it. Perhaps a trusted mediator to go look into that affair for me. You would have us... Go as your mediary. I would have you go and look for me, and for him, because I frankly don't trust him. I, I look over my shoulder at the group to gauge their reactions. How? I just bouncing up and down. How exactly would that be fair trade to your friend who got shot? Because he's going to get a magical item. And he loves magical items. Would any magical item do? No, it has to be from this idiot, because if not, it's not a true apology. Because he has to be the one to give it to him. And if it's not good enough, well, then his fate is sealed. And it's not my problem anymore. 
and I don't like having problems. <clears throat> so if I'm following, we would have to convince Red Jesse to give us the tip so we can go in his stead. Mm-hmm. Find and the magical if... item and bring it back to him. No, bring it back to me. And then I'll collect Red Jesse. And when my sloop takes you to see Dragon's Bones, on the way there, he can deliver the gift to my friend. Well, it's I not don't mean to be forward. Offer. I don't mean to be forward about this, but this Red Jesse seems like someone you want dead? Question mark. Ah, uh, that's not for me to decide. I mean, he's a good he's a good ship captain, but he's also a dumbass. Hmm. Complicated, but I like this. She kind of stops and leans forward. What are you? Oh, me, ma'am? I'm I'm a satyr. Yeah, but you're, like, fuzzy all the way through. Yeah, I was just born that way. Huh. Interesting. And what about Quiet over there? And she kind of jets ahead towards Kai. Uh, Kai's been looking over the crow's nest. He's just kind of looking out into the ocean. Uh, and as he hears that, he'll just turn back around and catch their gaze. Uh, he's been having a rough time. Huh. All right. Though he is quite capable, I'll have you know. He looks over at Takai and looks back to you and goes, Sure. If you're worried about us sailing with a ship and not having any experience, you should send us with a cutter because the sails are separate and they're easier to work and it's a two-man job. A sloop is a single large sail and it's going to be a lot harder for newbies to figure that out. But that's just my opinion. You're not manning one of my boats. You're going to be a passenger on one of my boats. I guess there's nothing to worry about. Nice nautical knowledge, though. Fucking weirdo. Guys just kind of lower his head and <laughs> turn around and look back out at the ocean. Guys looks back at uh, at Kai. I was impressed. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Hey. hey. <laughs> so, to make it simple... Go look into this dungeon for me. Collect the magical items inside, if they exist. If they don't exist, I'm going to feed Red Jesse to my friend. And if they do exist, Red Jesse's going to give one to my friend to make up for his transgressions. We. Uh, well, uh... I, I guess uh, we'll need some time to uh, go over the terms. Uh, one of our... Uh, Mem party members is uh, down back below on the ship. She like kind of gets up and stands over. And at this point, Milo, you see a head just poke out from above the the. I, the... I was actually gonna say, Monty, while that's happening, can I go hang out with the orc chef and just like make friends and cook things? Or yeah, you, you just disappear. You she should looks cook back. the fish. I was about to say, I want to. I do want to try and cook the fish, but I also want to help out in there just because it'd be fun. Sure. She kind of looks over the edge and goes, yeah, your friend's dead. He's not there. Uh, knowing him, he's probably helping out in your kitchen. <laughs> Cute. You got a chef. Poofles over there with the hair. You got a goat man. A really tall lizard with like three welts on his head. Seriously, dude, what happened to you? And then you got Mr. Fancy Pants here. You're quite the motley crew, huh? We've been getting that a lot. Hmm. Eastgun is, things. like, feeling oh. his face to try to, like, find a way to, like, hide the welts. I'm not sure we could use that as a party name, though. I think it's taken. I don't care. So, need to discuss with your cook? <laughs> yes, we should probably get him up to speed on all of this. Hmm. What's he cooking? Hmm. He specializes in toast. What's toast? 
Uh, it, it's it's the bread stuff that he... that's been, I guess, baked again. Why would you? That's it's redundant. Why would you do that again? Just, the edges get all he, crispy. He he kisses it with the sun's rays. I imagine that Milo's down doing the La Fossole song from Little Mermaid with like the <laughs> orange. Les poissons, les poissons, les poissons. I love les poissons. <laughs> <laughs> He watches Winona, like, looks down, looks back to you, and says, well, now I gotta fucking see this. She gets up. <laughs> go. G- down. Go down the ladder. Hurry. <laughs> All right. Sorry. And, and I guess Iskin will go down first. And try not to fall. And die. I'll, I'll wait till everyone else gets down. I'll go last. Okay. As you uh, guys begin to climb... Oh, Kai, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Gaia, since you're going down last, you'll notice that Kai stays up there a little bit longer than, I guess, Iskan and Otho. Mm. You just are watching him kind of stare out into the abyss of water, uh, but then he will eventually go down when I'm sure Winona says, get the hell out of my <laughs> crow's nest. I, I, oh, I, I, she's getting really impatient now. There you go. I, yeah. as, as, you, as you pass by, he just says, it is a really nice sight. Yeah. It's I'm in for you when you're out there. Have you ever sailed, Gaius? No, this is amazing! You're in for a treat. <laughs> Kai's gonna go down. Yep. Winona goes last. Um, and as you guys begin to climb down, suddenly, Winona's hands slip. And oh. she begins to fall and plummet. What do you guys do? I <laughs> Nothing, because I know what's about to happen. I, yeah, I'm right. also just gonna let her fall. Yep. <laughs> Gaius, you grab onto her leg, and she is just like a balloon. Just like her arms are behind her neck, and she just starts laughing her head off. She goes, <laughs> "Oh, they always fall for it. It's so fucking funny." Oh my god, nice reflexes though. You you could have actually caught me. You can let go though. Gaius, let's go. She gently begins to float down. Monty, does she? come across as being on the younger side or is she just sort of sarcastic and bombastic she looks to be around or younger than kai actually so she's on the younger side i see okay hey goat do you want to try i wait what you know this and she's like flying around Gaius looks back down and then looks over to her. I'm always down to try something once. Uh, Oh, the can of worms have been opened. Uh, Are you sure that's a good idea, Gaius? Yes. I can do it for one more person. Does someone else want to have fun? I want to try it. Uh, Kai's going to raise his hand because he's still up there with Gaius. Okay, Poofles. Watch your hair, though. She kind of lands on back onto the ladder, and then she reaches down and kind of touches both of you on each shoulder, and you feel your body become weightless. Uh, I gently let go of the rope, just like I leave my hand there, but just like up off, uh, it's just hanging off it. Yeah, and you're and as he, as he lets go, Kai's gonna just very gently push him in the chest. Like they're in space to see if he floats out. <laughs> yeah, you guys begin to kind of spin light, like oh! kind of light, and it's like the ground is really far beneath you, and you are just free floating above. Yeah, Eastkin has a face that could catch flies. His mouth is just wide open. He's never seen do anything we, like this. Do we feel like we can control our movement? But you do, way. yeah. As you kind of think about going in a direction, your body just kind of naturally... You feel the wind actually catch you and move you in that direction, almost like a kite. Uh, so, Gaius, you're going to watch as Kai starts to figure out that he can control where he moves. You're going to watch him do a straight nosedive to the floor, then stop, come up, and go down over the side of the boat. Okay, uh, I think I think he's dead. Uh... Hello? Kai! <laughs> nah, he's fine. He's just having he, fun. He uh, is just having a bit of fun. Fun that I think he's he could gone. use. A- as you call out for Kai, <laughs> you, you hear over the side of the boat, He's gone! 
Oh, Are no, you okay? He's, he's dying. Something terrible has happened. How could he's you dying. abandon your Come friend, to the edge. you lizard? Huh? <laughs> yeah, East Kind's gonna hurry up and scramble down. And I... as you get to the edge of the boat, you will see Kai fly up and throw water in your face. Uh... Mm. Gaius mm -hmm. doesn't come down. Like, he's observing all of this and absorbing it. He's kind of, like, standing... He's, like, staying in the air, like, A-posing until finally a thought occurs in his head. Uh, he floats himself up towards the bottom of the crow's nest and uses it to test how fast he can free fall by kicking himself off it. Yeah, you just begin to free fall and kind of play chicken with the ground. And do I... Can I stop myself right above the ground? Yeah, you immediately stop with, like, inches above the ground. As this is all happening and they're all kind of flying around, she turns to you, Otho. Winona turns to you and she goes, Man, your friends are fun. <laughs> yes, they are. That one needed it, and this one is trying to basically kill himself. Just watching Gaius once again, like, drop down and stop right before the ground. Oh, I, that... oh, no, you, you get it backwards. I'm now pinballing myself across every surface I can. Watch that... the rigging! That checks out, and yes. Yes, he did. Thank you. Nah. I'm just boring. I had to liven something up. <laughs> so what's with you anyway, huh? Working for Oslemir Harland? Well... It's uh, a long story. Not really oh. complicated, though. Pass! She kind of walks away from you. It's not boring, though. Mm, she kind of turns on her heel and spins around to face you. We were in Eastonvale when it died. That must have been fun. I'm being sarcastic, by the way. Dying is never fun. You died? It didn't. It didn't take. <laughs> it didn't take. So, are you a zombie? I don't think so. But you're not sure. It was never really my area of expertise. You'll understand. Huh. Oh uh, my Otho, god! You'll, you'll you'll hear from up in the sky. Don't worry, you're not a zombie! Trust me! I trust his opinion on the matter. You do? Alright, well, Floats McKenzie clearly is a zombie expert. I'm glad I'm learning more about you every day. Well. My brother was always the smarter of the two of us. Wait, he's your brother? Yes. But he's like a beanpole, and your dad is like a slab of meat. We didn't, we didn't bud off of him like a flower or something. That would explain you existing a lot more than what actually happened? <laughs> yes, Listen, of course. Listen, I mean this with every ounce of disrespect. Your dad's a fucking tool. You just he sort of get silent at that. Uh... Kai, Kai is going to call out, That's insulting the tools! Hmm. What? Sorry if I made fun of your dad, but he's always been kind of a dick to me, so... Well, I apologize for his behavior, but I can't control him any more than you can. I could control him if I wanted to, but I don't want to waste my time. kind of looks at you and there's like a moment of pause and she kind of wiggles for his sorceress. <laughs> I'm yes. not going to though. He's boring. I am aware. I... Gaius finally lands on the floor. And now I understand why Grand Graham Inferio loves these spells. Uh, Kai's going to land next to you. I can't believe she can cast that. I can't believe you pulled a prank on me like that. Eskin walks up, still wicking water from his <laughs> head. Thing. Oh, if my if my sister knew about this, she'd be so jealous. I have to write this down in the Odyssey. Hey, 
Tall. Tall, blue, and scaly. Hey. Huh? Four eyes. Okay, that's rude. I can keep going. I can make so many names for you. What? What, what can I do for you? You want me to dry you off? N no, thank you. Okay. Your funeral. It's Kitchen. Actually, it's actually fairly refreshing. Oh, actually, funeral number two. <laughs> what? Nothing. All right. Kitchen time. And she just ignores you all and walks to the kitchen. What did Milo, she what have you by funeral number two? What is this orc's name, Monty? <laughs> uh, his name is uh, Morgan. That's his name. Morgan the Orkin. Morgan the Orc. I'm I'm just I'm hanging out with Morgan. We're like just cooking stuff. We even I can can I go a little ham <laughs> with the narrative? <laughs> Sure, within reason. Just, sure, no, no. So it, it goes from like being, oh, uh, we gotta cook, we gotta cook boring, I don't know, sailor food and fish and stuff, and then just slowly Milo starts wheeling it, like, oh, but we could we could make this kind of pie, and and oh, we could make this kind of cake, like it just it gets it starts getting sweet and fancy. When when Ona likes cake, she likes to eat. She doesn't like greasy food. She likes the light food. Her favorite thing to eat is raw fish. Oh, that's no fun. No spices, no nothing. No, she's boring for the food stuff. Says it's her favorite thing. Shares it with a friend all the time. That is boring. Maybe, mm. maybe I, maybe I feel, like maybe I might have wasted my time if I went up there with she, the rest of them to meet her. She doesn't like pork. She are like you kidding me? Hates pork. Chicken she likes. Beef she likes every Ch now and again. Everybody likes chicken and beef. I'm getting Australian, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> she had duck once. She absolutely hated it. Too but, oily, what? she said. Hmm. Duck is literally just chicken, but the lower half of it, it's just duck. You're describing me, Monty. Cronky! <laughs> Wait, you're a, you're a duck? No. <laughs> I mean, where's my... Plan? Well, I mean, he has had experience. <laughs> there it is. I, I, I mean the whole, like, I was no waiting preference for it. to pork thing. I was and... waiting for it. Uh, 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 okay, look. Um, Morgan, how about we just... How about we how, how about you let me try to, to cook something for her? Maybe she'll come around and actually like food with some taste in it. Jesus Christ. I mean... Do you have something to live for? <laughs> I mean, I've a lot. To, I've got a lot to live for, but you know, maybe, maybe we could work a little bit of a miracle, and 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 you know, I'm just saying, if you upset her, bad things happen. That's fine. It's fine. I, Monty, can I give it a go? Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Can I guide you have a something? Your your core ingredient is your bream because they don't want to give you the ingredients since they're on ship, right? Oh, that's that's fine. That's fine. Um. Can I can I guidance myself on the cooking check? I'm gonna say because it's a long-winded thing that's gonna take okay. multiple steps. I'm gonna say no. So okay. it's just a straight check for doing a whole thing. Here we go. God damn it! Are you kidding? Mm, I'm. T I was so tempted to use it inspiration. It is immaculate, beautiful, garnished to perfection, seared perfectly it's got like kind of the the slices in it to make like the the juices enter into the meat a bit better mm -hmm. would have been great if you descaled it first though good good well well i, I mean look I, normally I, I don't mess up like this but I, I don't know maybe maybe she'll like it if she maybe. likes it raw maybe she'll like the the texture i, I don't know at, is at this point that the door opens and almost like bad comedy the door swings open and you see this woman the artwork of which hopefully connor is still showing on stream yeah uh, enters into the room and kind of sits here and goes what are you making uh, you you must be um uh sea lord Onona Odez. whoa you are short hello well you're you're very tall um uh, yeah i've i've been sitting here with um with uh morgan over here we've been cooking Hey Morgan. Morgan's like, hey. <laughs> kind of gives a little sheepish wave. So I actually, see. actually, uh, Miss Odez, I, I actually cooked something for you. Okay. She walks over and she you're looks. Just, 
He's got a big old smile and he's got like on a platter. Just so proud and happy with it. But Roll a persuasion like- check. With advantage, because you are you're pretty charming, I'd say. You don't look yeah, very yeah, threatening. Yeah. Good, 17, because I... 8, 8, 7, chat, and everyone listening. <laughs> with advantage, 17. Morgan, and she looks up at the orc and goes like, yeah, if this is poison, I want you to drown him. And Morgan's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Just like, matter-of-factly. <laughs> oh, oh, the the anime, like, shadow over the eyes and the forehead just <laughs> drop. He reaches with a fork and takes a bite. What did you spice it with? Um, man, oh man. Uh, oh, good question. Definitely pepper. Uh, maybe some pink salt if if it's available. Uh, I'd throw try to throw in a, a little uh, lemon squeeze. Uh, nothing too terribly fancy because she she's boring. Um. But yeah, just just something, a little bit of spice to kick it up. He begins to eat it, and just kind of like, you see her face go through, like, the stages of grief. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's great, I love that it's food. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it! <laughs> she kind of coughs up and she pulls out a scale, kind of flicks it to the floor. You must be. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, the name's Milo Brightbeam. Uh, the rest of you at this point also make your way into the kitchen. Gaius is on the ceiling, looking down at, G- at Milo. Yeah, you see Gaius, <laughs> uh, Milo <laughs> walking upside down. Oh, that's that's definitely new. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I see. Um, Morgan told me you you like your fish raw, but uh, I thought maybe. If you cook it, but not scale it, and I, I don't know, may, maybe it'd be a, a, a nice change of pace. Stupid, big Steven Universe smile. I'm not really fond of things that aren't purely from the ocean, usually. Like pepper, and... Uh, it was okay. It wasn't the worst thing I've eaten. It was certainly not the best, but... No. it. You know, if you, if you like things directly from the ocean, uh, garnish them with some uh, specialized seaweed and some some seawater salt. It actually might uh, bring out a little freshness. She turns towards you both and goes, "Are you guys here to do a mission, or are you here to try and sell me on a new chef?" Oh, sorry, sorry, I I just got carried away. Uh, guys, what's the details? She wants us to scope out a location for her in exchange for. Uh... In exchange for a ship and a uh, helmsman. All right. We're going to a dungeon. Really? Yes, we are looking for a magical item. If uh, it exists. Th- if it exists, we are to bring it back. If it does not, uh, a man could potentially die. Uh, this is all, of course, uh, proposed at the moment. We haven't actually agreed to it yet. We wanted to make sure we talked with you first. But if we don't do it, someone might get killed. No, someone else will have to go. Okay, Um, then. Um, I mean, that's... Good. I'm seeing it as a bounty hunt situation. (laughs) Point of order. He may or may not deserve it, but... I mean, I I think that's... That that doesn't sound like a bad idea. I mean, it could be treacherous, but... That's what we're here for. And I I don't know. Do, also, do you honestly think that any of the Ocean Lords won't send us on some kind of dangerous investigation? Wait, you talked to other Ocean Lords? Milo puts his hands over his mouth. <laughs> well, we did. Uh, we did have the option to check with a couple of people, so we wanted to see what the offers were before we made a decision. Who else did you talk to? Looks at Otho. Coleco. Ugh, the cockroach? (laughs) Man, she really is racist. (laughs) Wow. Ugh, she kind of shakes her shoulders and rolls her eyes. He wanted us to go investigate the claims of a... 
friendly ogre wife? She shrugs. I don't know much about the ogre thing. I mostly keep to my boat. It sounds interesting, though. That is fair enough. And so we were exploring our other options. Am I the last on your list? Clearly you've spoken with Oslemir Harland. Oslemir Harland was the one that gave the recommendations. There is a third. She leans forward. <laughs> is it the Willy Wonka gift? Uh, <laughs> Admiral Tipperbottom was the last on our list. Oh, okay. Mm. He... You'll like him. He kind of juts ahead towards you, Otho. It kind of gives you an incredulous look. Hmm. Well, I mean, if it were up to me, I, I kind of agree with uh, Gaius. It sounds like an interesting adventure. Yes, it does indeed sound quite intriguing. Admirable it's trial. It's a little time-consuming. Nah. It shouldn't make, take too much time. I mean, if he's lying, it'll be really quick. Well, if... if Although, you know this place better than any of us. Well, except for you, Kai. Sorry. But, um, I don't know. Do you think Admiral Tipperbottom's gonna give us a better deal? Well, Admiral... Gus Brand is uh, in charge of the building infrastructure of Matarallo, so not necessarily so much on the ship area. Mm-hmm. Winona nods. We're kind of opposites, he and I. In a sense, yes. So, would you say we've sort of already examined our best options. Monona like reaches over and begins to peel an orange and kind of gives us like she like this cheeky look. Like this very much like pert lips kind of looking down at the ground while gently peeling an orange, pretending to not be there but is clearly there. <laughs> kind of can presentation. I, can I'm going to ask something really weird, Monty, because I, I'm curious how much of an adventurous type of person she might be, because you can kind of get that from demeanor. Like, okay. Roll an insight sense. check. Okay. Please higher than a 10. Thank you, 24. <laughs> she is an agent of chaos. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> this woman, compared to Oslomir and compared to Coleco, it is almost baffling how little of a shit she gives about things in general. Like, when you're explaining who you've spoken to, it's not in a sort of devious way. It's more of like a, you know, high school, oh my god, what did Tiffany say kind of way, which is rather intriguing, based on what you can get from your observations. Milo's gonna give a sly look over to Gaius. You know, actually... down on the ceiling. You know, actually, guys, I've been kind of thinking it, it might be a nice preamble for our actual adventure that we're going to be taking. I don't think anyone's ever been going to experience anything like it. Then it sounds like you've all made up your mind. I, uh, I, we I could still put it to yet, a vote. But... Yeah, no, we could still I mean, put it to a vote. If you want to meet with Gus Brunton, I'm not going to be offended. It's more a matter of whether or not it's a waste of time. And Iskin looks at Otho again for some sort of clarification or response. How is this all a waste of time? We've been exploring an entire new city. We're not exploring. You're not. <laughs> damn. <laughs> it's true, though. It's not. I didn't say it wasn't true, but damn. Gaius folds his arms and looks to the side, but he's upside down, so he's just like he's looking to the wall. <laughs> It's even when better. Nona, when Nona takes a bite of orange, it goes, "Oh." <laughs> well, I will agree I with you gonna... on something. That if we do find out that there is another deal to be had, then surely we can take it. But at the same time, who am I, of all people, Eskan, to deny a trial? 
I'm not trying to suggest you don't. I just... It's usually good business to see all your options, you know? Then see them we shall. I mean, unless Otho has a reason why we wouldn't need to. Kind of feels like, you know, between our merchant ship and our likely fastest ships in the fleet, we have the best options on the table already. It just seems improper that we were given options and we are not exploring all of them. Okay. What does so... Kai think of all of this? Kai's listening to you guys go back and forth with Otho. Koi, what do you think we should do? I think you should hear out all your options. All right. That's three to two, so I guess we'll just go check out the rest of our options then. Besides it. Besides, before finding a th Oh, sorry. No, go for it. I, I got you after this. Besides, finding a third option will at least help me in what I'm trying to seek out. No offense, Miss Odez, but I don't believe that what I'm looking for is something you can provide. Because you've you said it yourself, you stay here on this ship more often than not. Yeah. So a third option might lead me to what I'm looking for. Alright. Well, shall we get going then? Oh, How long does this um, last? Oh, that lasts an hour. Have fun. Guys is like doing the fucking like the D the the Dante like grem pizza gremlin dance on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> He's like doing push ups. He's like, hey, look, push downs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kai's going to try to get Winona's attention while everybody starts filing out. What do you want, Poofles? I had a question. Well, I guess two questions. Do you, you don't seem like a Lord Odez kind of a person. Is Winona proper? Do you care? Do you have a nickname? Oh, oh Lord Odez. Ooh, she shudders at that. <laughs> right, Just call why me. I'm asking. Okay. Just call me Winona. Okay. We're there. Winona. You're you're right. halfling cooked for me. I think we're at that point. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I I had a question for you. You obviously do a lot of sea travel, I would assume. Um, uh, that's a bit of an understatement, but yes. Right. So I'm curious. Do you or anyone in your employ potentially have any star maps? Star maps. Well. Yeah, I know when you're at sea, sometimes you can use the stars for directions because, you know, a compass might get wonky or it might not be on the ship. And I've heard people use the stars to kind of get around. I'm curious if you've ever done that. Just use the wind, honestly. Hmm. Okay. Common star charts you could probably find in the Moonstone Alley. Wizards or do all kinds of shit with that. I don't know. I don't care. I'm a sorcerer. I don't give a shit about that. Um, rare things. My friend has quite the collection. But he doesn't willingly trade things away. So, who knows? Maybe you'll find something else in this place and it's worth a trade. Or you'll want to keep it. Who knows? But if you just want a common star map, I would just look at the Moonstone Alley. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out when we have a chance. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. No problem. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. And, uh, may you have fair winds and following seas. And he'll just kind of head out. Fair winds and calm seas are my best friend. I don't have to ask for them. It's more of a term of endearment among sailors, but yeah, it seems you're pretty set. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> okay, later. Gaius last one out of the door. Just like looks at her, waves a little bit, and then just like, w like normally walks out the ceiling and just vertically whoop <laughs> up the top. As you guys leave, you can hear her go. 
All right, Morgan, clean it up. Morgan's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Just you see him pick up the dishes from your from your cooking, Aww. Milo, as you leave the galley. And she kind of walks out following you, and she goes, can't wait to hear what your answer is. Hopefully it won't take too long. Eh, no. Take all the time you want. It's not my life on the line. <laughs> if nothing else, ma'am, I was impressed. Oh, I'm glad. I'm impressed, too. I don't get to go to land too often. It's nice when the weirdos come to me. Honestly, your ship is pretty cool. Eh, it's all right. Keeps breaking. She kind of stamps down on the deck a couple times. But... Hmm? Go ahead. No, 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 I was about to say, in response to that, just like, I'm impressed, too. Guy just, like, holds his hands to his cheeks, just like, ah. <laughs> Oh. Monty, out of curiosity, how many masts does this thing have? Three really big ones and a couple smaller okay. ones. Got it. Yeah, it's a big ship, big vessel. Okay. I just walks down vertically. <laughs> yep. The fairy woman kind of waits for you down at the bottom, and as you guys board and depart, you make your way across the ocean. Guy I'm gonna is... sit down. <laughs> you sit in the fetal time. position in the ball. You have space. <laughs> I'm assuming Gaius and Kai, are you guys flying the whole way back? Uh, Kai is first going to take a seat next to Iskon first. Uh, Gaius is not going to fucking change, like... He's got a flight spell on him. He's not going to use this light. Like, he's not going to just let this sit a, sit by and do nothing. He's going to, like, run across the surface of the water and shit. Yep. Uh, Kai's going to sit down next to Iskon. I assume, are you, like, <laughs> heading your lap, just trying not to look at anything and keeping your ears tucked? I mean, he's still looking out over the waters, but he's keeping his head down so he doesn't get thwacked anymore. Uh, he will tap you on the shoulder then to get your attention if you're looking out at the water. Huh? Oh, uh, hey, Kai, what's up? Hey, uh, sorry about on the boat. I didn't realize it would mess with you that much. I probably shouldn't have done that, considering well, oh, all the danger. No, no, it's 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 fine. I I thought you were kind of actually in trouble, but it was a good laugh. Yeah, I, I probably shouldn't do that, though, because I'm going to be in trouble a lot, and I kind of don't want you to just start ignoring it. <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm not the type. Nice. Um, oh, uh, sorry, uh, another question. Uh, when we eventually, like, go to sleep, whether that's at an inn or on a boat or something, uh, can I borrow Mira's staff tonight? I, I'll give it back. I'm not going to keep it or anything. I mean, yeah, it's it's not mine, really. Uh, well, you're using it. I just I wanted to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll get it back to you. I mean, you can have it for now, but when we go to bed, I'll I'll come find you. Um, what do you I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to go. Uh, practice. Uh, okay. I have a theory I want to test, and I just, I need to borrow the staff. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to go do the fly thing, because this is, like, the coolest thing I've ever done. Uh, you can see, like, for a moment, like, there's some curiosity in his eyes, and uh, he catches himself and just kind of says, uh, yeah, uh, have fun. You want to come? I, I can't. Why don't you just hold on? Uh, no, I think I'll stay in the boat for now. Thanks. I mean, you won't hit your head in the air. No, but I could drown. Right, so like, you know, it's a coin flip. Yeah, boat but flying's way more fun. I I'm good. Go have fun. Guys chasing seagulls. Hey, guys! <laughs> They're freaking out because you're yeah! actually faster than them. Yeah. Hey, guys! <laughs> Yeah. I'll race you to the shore! Competition? <laughs> Challenge? <laughs> Challenge, you say? I Very guess I well. do. Mm -hmm. All right, mm. As you guys coast off to the further sky, 
The fairy woman kind of looks down towards you, uh, Iskan, Milo, and uh, Otho, and she kind of smiles. She goes, huh, I guess the lady was quite taken with you all. Hmm. With some of us. Mm. She does not oh. usually cast spells on people she does not like. Otho, what do you mean by that? I have a feeling she... saw a lot of my father in me. But you're you're not your dad, though. I know. I know that. Would you be worth inciting at this point? <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, while you do that, Iskan is going to speak up as well. Sometimes people have a hard time seeing past your family name. But I wouldn't let it worry you too much. Okay. Oh. Um, Otho uh, has his brows furred a little bit, and he seems kind of ticked off. Mm. I mean, I, I, I actually agree with Iskan on this. You're not your father, and... I, you are Otho. I don't. I don't know who your father is. Apparently, it's he's not the best man. But you're not him. You're Otho. He just pats you on the leg. You're yeah. Otho, and and that's all that matters to me. And that should be all that matters to you, <laughs> Mister Brightbeam. I appreciate your words, but I think you are misunderstanding the situation. Well, then, explain it. So I can understand. My father is not the most emotionally available in the best of times. He... He's a hard man. He is very much in tune with his work and... That candor earns him a lot of ire from his fellow ocean lords. And I think, I just think that some of it is undeserved. Do you like your father? I love my father. I respect what he does. He's kept this city safe for as long as I've been alive and then some. And I just don't know You know what's gotten into him. You know, Otho, for what it's worth, I kind of know what you're going through. You love your father. You may not know him as well as you wish you could, but he does good things, even if not a lot of people know it, right? That's kind of, you know, that's kind of what my father is like. But I don't even know him. Not really. I know <laughs> who he is. I, I know what he does. And I know he does good things. And though I don't know him that well, you know, being his son, I want to do good things for other people so that maybe those people can look at me, what I do, and what my faith does, and maybe they'll think better of it. So maybe the best thing that you can do is be the best self you can be. So maybe people can start to understand what your family does for everyone, even if they don't see it. Like, like nobody really sees what my father does. I am aware, Mr. Brightbeam, but this situation with my father is more delicate and complicated than, than I think anybody quite realizes, even myself, probably. I don't know. And furthermore, this is 
not the place to talk about that. Yeah, I feel, I, I feel like I should not be here for this. I feel like a lot has just been spoken, and I'm just... I feel kind of awkward. Um, I'm just going to keep uh, just steering the boat, and we're just going to look at... Hey, look, a bird! Excellent, uh, let's go! I uh, slip her gold. You didn't hear anything. I did not hear anything. I, I'm sorry, Ortho, I just... I just want you to be yourself, that's all. I am perfectly capable of being myself, Mr. Brightbeam. All right. We're docking. Hold on. And that's where we're going to take our break. I'm oh, boy. Because <laughs> <laughs> my dinner actually it. got finished. I'll be right back. I need I'm a shoot. shotgun as well. I will be back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up and refill my water, and I'm going to go. I've been told there's popsicles in a freezer, and I'm going to go what? see if I can find one of those. Yeah. Incredible. I'm going to go, I'm gonna Shay's go check house on my is dog. amazing. It's got food. I'm going to go check yeah, on I'm my dog. Stay right here he's not feeling too well. Every Oh, I hope the dog is okay. And I'm gonna go use the restroom so I don't have credit to be where here with credit Bosco. is due. Also, um, the artwork was by Zeus Draws as well. Zeus Draws actually did all the Ocean Lords, so yeah, Zeus Draws, hey. thank you. Woo. Looks great. Welcome okay. to the Basco Halftime Show. How's everybody doing? I hope you're having a great time wherever you are. Thank you for listening on YouTube, or if you skip past these, I don't blame you. <laughs> so, welcome in. Good to see everybody. Bosco, what's your favorite color of popsicle? Chocolate, so brown. They used to make popsicles that were chocolate flavored and they were delicious. They probably still do. Oh, snap. What up, Bracky? Uh, good so far. Good to hear it. Glad you're good. Hello, Bosco. Who is your favorite Kusamon? Oh, for crying out loud my favorite kusamon was mizuki the correct answer is mizuki we're referring to the am uh, ai somnium files nirvana initiative by the way yeah i should probably plug some of the stuff i'm doing because i try not to do it at the beginning because we're always rushed for time uh so on tuesdays i'm playing with midnight kai and colonel uh cheru we are doing the ai somnium files nirvana initiative we just did a pokemon go remixed edition kind of a thing so you, all of the characters that are in the game were the pokemon and they were called kusamon so yeah, Mizuki was the best one, obviously. Also, the AI in that game is really, really horny. Also, if you missed the beginning of the stream, go check out Soul Hackers 2. I play Raven in that game. It was a lot of fun to work on. I actually listened to some of the cutscenes, and I really, really like what we were able to do with the game. It's a Shin Megami Tensei universe-based game, so if you like that universe, by all means. Uh, what else? There was something else I was going to say, and I don't want to forget. Oh, wrestling's back on Fridays. And on Thursdays, I've been doing Throwback Thursday on my channel. So if you swing by, we just went through all of the Streets of Rage games. It's me and my buddy Bill Rogers, who's the voice of Brock on Pokemon. So you can come by and hear us yell at each other while we play that. We're going to be doing some more Ninja Turtles in the future. I know the Cowabunga Collective, I think, just came out. So we'll, we'll be doing that for sure. Alabo Bingo, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, guys, super fun session so far. I can't get over <clears> how... <throat> Shonen anime Winona looks. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, Bosco, are you excited for Punk versus Moxley? I am. Uh, AEW, some of their booking recently, I've been critical of. I yeah. thought the Moxley, I thought the Moxley Punk match, the first one they did, was really interesting. I think I, the rumors that I heard were that Moxley didn't want to lose to Punk that night, basically in his hometown. So they let Moxley get the win. They solidified his reign. And then Punk probably wins in Chicago, but I'm excited for the match. I hope Punk is legitimately okay and cleared to go. I'm sure he is. There's some other really good cards or uh, matches on the card that I like. I'm also really interested in this NXT versus NXT UK thing that WWE is doing. So I might check out Clash at the Castle, at least for that. I wouldn't say Punk's washed. I wouldn't go that far. That's not really fair. Friendship! Thank you so much for the tier one sub. Loving the character designs of all the Ocean Lords. Can't wait to meet Otho and Kai's father and see buff Otho. Buff Otho. Yeah. Hi, Connor. Welcome back. By the way, I meant to say this before you guys all took off. Great scene with Gaijin. You guys are... Yeah. It's good. I have ships. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I guess I wanted to give you both props. That was a good scene. I've got oatmeal cream pie ice cream. Nice. That sounds like something I wish I could have had in a previous life. Mm. 
Uh, somebody just shot Zako Duo, so I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Burnout. I appreciate that. Uh, hey, Bosco, are you excited for your Bears to play football again? I am. I watch the preseason games. I, you know, I, I don't have a lot of hope for the season, but it is what it is. I am excited for football to be back. There's not a lot of it. Raw Sodium, thank you for the 50 bits. Just started reinstalling Dust. Can't wait to listen to the rest of the session while playing it again after a couple of years. Uh, that's not a game that... So, there's a lot of really good cutscenes in that game. I guess if you're in between cutscenes, it's fine. But it's going to get real confusing to hear dialogue from two different sources. It would drive me crazy. So, best of luck with that. But thank you for picking the game up again. We appreciate that. By the way, we raised uh, I want probably close to two thousand, maybe more than two thousand dollars for uh, relief in Ukraine by playing Dust the last three weekends. So thank you to everybody who came and celebrated the tenth anniversary of Dust, which was one of the first games I was ever in. That was it was a lot of fun. It brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> oh boy! So far, Kai's track record with boats is much better than Remy. You know, that's not fair, because I didn't have a lot of opportunities at Remy to be on a boat. So it's 0 for 1 versus 1 for 1. Yeah, but Remy uh, could fly, so... Remy could... Uh, Remy could fly on Volo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So a it's a little different. A it's a little... I mean, fair, but it's a little different. Zinlita, thank you for the 100 bits. I can't believe Monty turned Arkov into a mean girl and put her in the game. <laughs> I don't, I don't agree with that. The, the The character is very similar to the informant from Prince Division, and Arkov was in that game, and I don't think it was a reference to Arkov. I think that's just Monty's Valley Girl. That wasn't a Valley thing. Girl. All right. If if What's anything, that was the girl who hates the Mean Girls. Fair enough. Uh, Blackfoot, thank you for the leap bits. Goats in space. I mean, legit. You didn't say uh, that, Shin, right. thank you for the 100 bits. Boosco, hi. Hello. Gauze, thank you for the bits. Uh, want Gaius to go into goblin camps, predator style, and make armor out of their skin. That is metal as hell. That got intense. I approve of this. Fast. Yeah. That Bosco. was uh, Valley Girl, Mark. Huh? It was not Valley Girl. As no, someone what, who grew up what in Baby Southern Man California... Said. I think there's a, mis a, a misnomer to the term valley girl. People don't quite understand what a valley girl is. I just, what a girl wants. She's a mean what girl. What a girl needs. Because you're not going to see Winona at the mall on the weekend hanging out with four other girls who are all sitting around drinking Slurpees and talking about school. The right girls, man. I don't know. Maybe. And in, in if that mall was on the ocean, maybe. She's spending her free time asleep in a place where literally you have to work harder than most people want to, to find her. She's just Oh, her. so that's, so Monty just did a self insert then. Probably. Yeah, that makes I'd, sense. I would Once be it's... more inclined to believe that than Yeah, Valley you know Girl. what, I'll buy that. So yeah, Winona's just <clears throat> Monty. I'm gonna go refill my drink, sorry, just real quick. Uh, Travis, hey, Carrie, thank you for the 10 bits. Hope your night's going well, everyone. Uh, so far, we'll see what happens in the second half. Magic Ninja Go, thank you for the 100 bits. Yo, that art also, Milo's a lot shorter than I imagined. Guys, you've known the heights of the characters for like Like since months. the first, first episode, Milo yeah. is oh, half yeah. of all of our heights. It's Hello, true. Back. Also, I don't know where there's this misperception that like not all of us are, like okay. Otho, Kai, and Iskan are large. They're all six foot plus. They're big. Yeah, and... Iskan and Kai are the same height, so they're right. and they're the tallest. And Gaius like, is 5'10", I think? Five, no, I'm 5'8". 5'8". Five, 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 eight. Five, eight. Oh, you're 5'8"? Oh, eight. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, three he's feet tall. He, he's average, but in this group, he's <laughs> short. Yeah. Halfling. Remember, guys. Yeah. Kai is taller than I thought. I thought Kai was a kid. Kids can have growth spurts at various ages. And once you're past 18, typically, you're only going to get one more, maybe. Dude, maybe. I was 6'2", six, was six by the time I was 17. Yeah, so you were mostly where you were going to be because you're yeah. six four now. Yeah, I hit six four just after graduating, so yeah. I was I was about sorry if I and took so long. I wanted to I wanted to like scarf down dinner so I wasn't no, eating no, at good. one o'clock in the oh, morning. Oh, you're good. I think Monty got attacked. Monty's by the still popsicles, gone. Yeah. So you're uh, Monty died. Thank what? You, thank you for the ninety five bits, Bosco. Are we setting sail the Winona and Kai ship? 
I mean, <laughs> off of one conversation, really? You're gonna go for the ship this early? I was, I was you, going to if no one else did. You why? Know fandoms work, oh, Bosco. Geez. You, only, you don't All even right. need a conversation for ships to exist. Fine. You just then have to cough in their general direction. <laughs> yeah. Then, it, then in the ship same room with everybody, I guess. Uh, also, I did want to say this, and Shehalem is reminding me with a thousand bits. Uh, it is Froggy's birthday, Shehalem's daughter. So, Happy birthday, nice. Froggy. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Shehalem very specifically wanted a shout out because, and I'll just read this, uh, she started listening to the game with me from the beginning and loved Monty's DM style. She now has surpassed Monty because only one of them has a driver's license. Oh. Oh. oh God. Damn. Fucking savage. Shots. Wow. I really hope Monty's like enjoying that popsicle where she can't hear us. So. Well, she better <laughs> suck on it some more because she just got burned. Uh, thousand bits. Thank you so much, Shehalem. We really appreciate it. Lasume, the robot, with 200 bits. So, how long till Kai starts to look like Bandit Keith from Yu-Gi-Oh? I mean, we're almost there already. Like, we started there. No, he's not blonde. That's what I'm saying. He's close. He looks more like... What's that guy? Um, is it Mako? Mako? Yeah, the, the dude what? with the ocean theme deck. The freaky fish guy? It's Mako. Freaky fish yeah. bid. Mako's uh, a freaky <laughs> fish guy. Gorns, thank you for the 100 bits. I have a DM question for Monty. For any advice on DMing, how do you avoid railroading and main character syndrome? <clears throat> well, Monty's not here, but uh, Mark and Zito, you guys DM, and Connor does. I heard him sit down. Any advice to avoid railroading and main character syndrome? Uh, no, because sometimes it's a necessary evil. I was I'm just going to okay. say. The best okay, way to monkeys. avoid railroading is to railroad when you need to. Yeah, my my biggest suggestion would be give the illusion of choice. So, for example, it's not technically a railroad to say, you guys have two doors. Behind one door is an ancient red dragon. Through the other door is the treasure that you seek. Which door would you like to choose? You're not railroading them, and they can absolutely get obliterated by a red dragon, but it's the illusion of choice. But you know where you're trying to aim them. And then just have a good backup plan if they decide not to do that. Yep. I think the most important thing, though, as a DM and as a player is, like, your DM will railroad less if you're very clear about what your direction is. If you're wibbly-wobbly, it's a nightmare. So if you, you know, if you are a player who's like, I hate railroading, I don't want to be railroaded, your party as a group has to communicate communicate very clearly what you would like to do or oh. what your goals are, so that way your DM can prepare for that. If that your makes DM, sense. Your DM absolutely loves it when they ask you what you would like to do and you go, I don't know. Oh, I hate it. Oh, they, they absolutely fucking love it, dude. Do it all the time. Uh, my best advice for avoiding main character syndrome is just be aware of which characters you're focusing on and try to come up with storylines that can include as many people as possible. Yeah. And if you are going to do... Oh, good. My my go to is your character needs to have a reason why they have to work with others. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a flaw, whether it's something that's you know beneficial, like always when you're making a character, no matter what the character is, they have to have something that's like, why did they have to work with somebody else? Like, what's the reason why? And it has to be a good reason. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm back. back. Are we good to keep going? Yeah, I think, yeah. I, think we're, I, think I got we're ice cream, and me and Shay. Yeah, Shay showed. Well, I actually got ice cream, and Shay showed me her stick bug. She's got like a real big one. It's like two inches long. It was huge. Did you get stick bugged? I I did, wish. Did Let me you? no. When that meme came out, like Shay was like, "My time has come," and she literally <laughs> like tried to make her stick bug wiggle. It was great. Like when that meme came out, I was like, "Shay, why?" <laughs> All right, you guys good to keep going? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, right. I don't know. I guess so. No. <laughs> We gotta do it once. I love you guys. So, as you guys land your ship, a few of you getting some stairs, specifically you, Gaius, and you, Kai, as you are flying through the air and eventually reach the edge of the dock. I'm gonna say both of you roll initiative, and whoever gets the higher number won the race. I'm good with that. All right. Let's do it. Oh, no! Oh, oh my God. Get out the way now. Hold on. Way now. Could we could still tie, so hang on. Let's see. Net 20. Uh, calling it 16 yeah. so Gaius as you're flying you see a fin like out of the water like some sort of like small fin and as you mm. fly over you see a fish with like these sort of spiky fins and its face is like a hammer 
and there's eyes on the end of either side, and it's currently swimming at the bottom, and it completely sidelines you from the race. It's way more interesting and way cooler. Hell yeah. Otho, you land on the dock first place as a Otho. bunch of... Oh, sorry. Um, I won. Kai, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I forget I'm here sometimes, as too. If. Kai, I just as run you... across water like Sonic. <laughs> 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 no uh, Kai as you land on the dogs there's a few fishermen who kind of stare at you wide eyed as they're fixing nets just like bewildered um magic right right yeah and they all kind of clap awkwardly like oh okay yeah. Yeah. as the ship comes <clears throat> in and, and docks where it had left initially Well, I suppose all that's left is to find the Admiral. It doesn't happen, but Guy just like wa like walks up from underneath the deck with a fucking hammerhead shark slung over his shoulder. Oh yeah, let's go. Oh, uh, <laughs> Winter, wait, where are you at? Oh, I'm over here. You watch as uh, currently playing cards with some of the sailors. <laughs> The pseudo dragon <laughs> drops the cars and goes, Sorry, gents, I can't take any more money from you. And one of them goes, Ah, oh, you rat bastard. And he flies <laughs> over to you. I want to imagine the cards are way too big for him. <clears throat> Fruitful meeting, I assume, based on the new skills of your companions. We were given an option, yes. Good. Miss Winona Odez has been known to be fickle in a word. Uh, Eastgun will turn back towards the uh, Dragonborn. Uh, if uh, we take uh, the Ocean Lord up on her offer, uh, we'll be back this way. Uh, but if not, I'll be sure to let you know. So you don't have to wait for us. You do not have to worry. I'm here for literally anybody. But yes, I. if you do, I will be here for my services. Thank you. Of course. Be careful I in the city. Kai yeah, is going to turn towards the pseudo dragon. Um, wait, do you play cards? I'm also well versed in chess, and I have been known to partake in dominoes. Huh. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, uh, good to know. Okay. What? I've Voyage is long. It's good to brush up on some skills. I, I don't disagree. Right. Anyway, so you know where this Ocean Lord dude is, right? I do. He is in the uh, the Forge Ward, the Trade Ward. It's basically where all the building occurs. Right. Just I guess follow the large plumes of smoke. Suppose we'll head there now. <clears throat> okay. Um, Monty, are there any lighthouses? Uh, on the docks here? Uh, there's, like, small ones. Uh, mostly set out at the ends of docks. Um, you see boys as well. Um, bu -bu boy Uh, <laughs> that I seem to you have... I like, work boys for a second, and I was very confused. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, those two... Oh, wait, I was over here bobbing up and down. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, you get drown some fish. Are you drowning, you git? No. You do see that there are some arcane powered kind of smaller light structures, but the biggest one that you definitely see is off kind of on the eastern side of the shores on sort of a similar pinnacle like rock. <sighs> you know, they always name the big ships. After all, that's where all the heroes go and set sail and lay waste to some pirate vessels, but the lighthouses that bring them back safely home, they never get this, some special treatment. They don't? Mm. I wish they would name the lighthouses. I've always taken to calling the big one Anya. Uh, I thought you were talking about some kind of landmark name. Uh, but I guess that's a nice name. <laughs> I yeah. started it when I was Aren't younger. you glad he didn't name the rest of them? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Well, I digress. 
Let's go meet the Admiral. Right. Admiral Crunch, we're here. We all fucking start doing the the treasure treasure island fucking walk <laughs> into the <laughs> Shiver my timber, shiver my soul. Oh no, I, I was thinking the 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 oh, Russian one. Oh, the Russian. Da, 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 da. Bias. Yeah. That's. What's your passive oh. perception? Oh God. <laughs> Twelve. Okay. Alrighty. You guys make your way through the dock ward. At this point, it's kind of hitting somewhat sunset. Kind of like four o'clock, I would say. Um, you do notice that there are some bells that ring out every now and again, and it seems to kind of rouse people to either disembark from their vessels or, you know, oh, it's time for food and kind of slowly about. You now see people kind of meeting and talking a bit more. Um, but as you guys progress through the trade ward, you eventually find a actual gate, um, a stone wall that kind of separates the docks from what appears to be the sort of almost very separated industrial complex uh, of the trade uh, ward. You can see the buildings are much larger in size, almost as if every building that sits upon this pla uh, this platform of stone is the same size as Coleco's big trade building, which was already massive on its own. Uh, you see large foundries with plumes and chimneys of smoke gusting into the air and ca catching on the wind. Uh, as you reach the gate, you see that it is currently guarded similarly to the uh, figurehead gate by two fully armored guards on the back of axe beaks that are also armored. Uh, and they kind of glance at you, kind of acknowledging you as you kind of head into this stone tunnel, this archway. Uh, and as you emerge on the other side, immediately... Sorry, I'm just adjusting my sound here. <clears throat> Gotta bring the baby back. No, we're not bringing the baby black. Ma we're baby not bringing back. the baby black? <laughs> sorry. Oh, <Whoa. laughs> My language is slurring. I'm very sorry. Good. I was really concerned for a minute. Just all of a sudden, it's like a, a dwarf baby, baby working black, the baby forge. Black, baby black. <laughs> Just covered in soot. <laughs> Man, it's a living. Go. <laughs> I got, I got, I got baby back, and I was also looking for blacksmith for my oh, audio. Yeah, so baby. that's what happened there. Mm. The streets widen to a significant margin, and you see many more carts. Um, you see massive carts, taller than two men, being pulled by four draft horses, and it is just filled with iron ore currently being moved throughout the city. You see various other individuals kind of moving about. Um, few dwarves, surprisingly. Um, you're smoking outside and, and discussing in dwarvish about the day's work. Uh, you see what appears to be reasonably well-dressed, kind of tight-clothed, um, looks like messengers kind of dashing about between buildings with lists longer than a scarf. Um... And you do notice, kind of out of place on sort of near the pinnacle of a rock, uh, a lovely looking large home. Um, once again, kind of very um, European, you know, British looking um, with sort of a, what's the word? It's not painted as much as it is stained. It is natural wood stained. Varnished? With mixtures of, yeah, varnished. varnished with stone. Um, and attached to it appears to be some sort of, like, similar to Master Point hat, but a lot less shabby. A large tower on it um, that is quite impressive and, and kind of makes the whole building stand out. Uh, is that our destination? You don't know. It does stand out. It does look like a domicile compared to the very clearly work buildings around. Oh, uh, what? Oh, go ahead. Is there, uh, so where's the nearest, like, looking like a uh, blue-collar dwarf who's just, like, on his lunch break at the moment? 
Uh, you see one currently just kind of like step out of a workshop, kind of look side to side and pull a flask out of his beard and <laughs> <laughs> takes a I've... drink and, <laughs> and sticks it back in. Guys, dare you reveal like our hiding spot, Monty. <laughs> Absent mildly just like walks up to him and speaks in dwarvish. Hail. Hail, friend. I thank you. I was wondering if it wouldn't be so much trouble if I could ask for directions. This is all Certainly. dwarvish, by the way. Yeah, you all just hear, for those who don't speak dwarvish, you hear Gaia speaking in this kind of smooth yet harsh language. The dwarf kind of strokes his beard. You can hear some clinking inside, and he goes, Show sure, where you're trying to go. We're actually looking for the Ocean Lord. Do you know where their domicile ah. is? Ah, his office is in that building up there, and he points to the building with the tower. Oh, well, excellent. I had a hunch, but I just wanted to make sure I pass him a gold. Ah, thank you. If you're looking for where he lives, and he kind of points, he lives at the base of that uh, lighthouse there. Ooh, interesting. I've actually wanted to see what was inside one of those. Well, you have a good rest of your day, sir. You too. And you didn't see anything. He kind of gives you a wink. He just, like, nods and just, like... He, like, nods and then just, like, walks back to everyone else. Well, we were on the right track. That building over there is the, uh, is where their place of work is. However, if we want to find out where they're living, we would go over there. And I point to the lighthouse. Well, so should we go to the lighthouse then? I believe so. It is midday. The Admiral would probably be working around this time. All right, then. Let's get going. So you guys are going to head to his office then? Yes. All right. As you guys make your way, uh, you actually see a familiar face walking in the crowd towards you uh, as you see Ky uh, Kyle Tenno currently walking. Uh, we turn around and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you see he's currently uh, has a, a donkey with him and he's currently like his head is down. He doesn't notice you at all. He's looking at what appears to be a piece of paper and seems like he's kind of muttering to himself at the moment. Ah, two jackasses. I want to. I I don't want to sneak up on this man. I actually kind of just like want to like walk up to his side and like peer over his shoulder at what he's writing. <laughs> As you kind of uh, do, you attempt to sneak up on him. To yeah, think? yeah. You know, what? if our shits and giggles, let's do it. But like, if right. it fails, I'm not upset by it. Eleven. You manage to sneak up on him. Uh, the paper seems to pertain to a very crude sketch of a boat, which appears to be a shipping vessel. Uh, with specific points outlined and detailed, uh, specifically the frame as well as the um, the figurehead being marked with the design. And as your shadow kind of engulfs him, he quickly kind of folds it. He goes, Ah, it was you. Yes, hello again. Hello again. Are you in the business of making beautiful pieces for ships? I'm in the business of... Providing materials to build beautiful ships, yes. How's that been going for you so far? It has been quite fruitful. Had a very good delivery recently. Was it robbed on the roads? Yes, we heard about your delivery. Ah, did you? Yeah. I can see why you didn't want to tell us where it was coming from. Great secrets. The term exists for a reason. I am no, curious. How did you come about this information? I did not tell you. We spoke with the Ocean Lord. You spoke with Master Coleco. The Beetle Man. Indeed. Master of Coin he is. He very much... Appreciated the delivery making its way to him. He believes it may be the beginnings of a beautiful and fruitful trade relationship. If I... the individual responsible for such sailcloth wasn't so difficult to communicate with. Hmm. 
You've made Look. business before with him before. Yeah, I've sh I'm certain you've made business with him before, have you not? With Master Coleco, yes. He is my boss. Hmm. And what about just... the other side of that trade? What How about did you it? you manage to, uh, make the trade? Kato looks you up and down. Roll a pers- What are you doing? Are you trying to intimidate him or persuade him to maybe give you information? Uh, I'm not trying to intimidate him. I'm definitely trying to get a little bit of information because we were asked to kind of go and speak with the ogre wives in relation to this, so trying to get a little bit more information that maybe Coleco didn't give us. Okay. Go ahead and roll a persuasion check. 13. Bad. Well, rumors of ogres trying to trade by the roadside is enough to make a man laugh, but it is also enough to make a man very curious. Yes? Yeah. Curious enough that, uh, you know, they didn't kill you on your way in or out. That is the funny thing. They did not do this. Apparently their ogre wife believes in peaceful communication, which is rather strange. What you sense any like? ill will? Oh, I never got yeah. to meet her. I was told strictly that she did not wish to see human beings. Hmm. I spoke with an intermediary, a tall ogre who spoke in broken common. She probably and can't control her hunger around them. Assumption's bad for business. But it was enough to make a good trade. And the material is well made. Tough like the ogres. It can catch the wind just as easily. So you sense no ill will from all of this trade with the ogre wives, then? Not all the ogre wives. But this one seems to have some possibility, I suppose. That's something I've been wondering. How do you approach an ogre wife that's trying to do business? Well... Just like normal business, you go to your storefront. So in this case, the ogres stationing themselves on roads, selling scarves and shirts and <laughs> all manner of knickknacks. You speak with them, ask to make dialogue, and they speak on your behalf. Wait, they're stationed on the roads? We didn't they see are, yes. They coming south. And that is because they are not south. That is because they are in a different location. One that I will not reveal to you because, again, trade secret. That's well, fine, but... Oh, sorry, go ahead. What if I were to tell you that we're in talks with the Ocean Lord to go and potentially solidify those trade routes? Well, then I wish you the best of luck. Hmm. Do they have some kind of symbol or icon that identifies them as merchants? They'll wave you down on the road. That's generally what they do. They're also wearing nice clothing. Well, nicer. It's not just scraps, it's actual like... And he kind of touches his own vest and kind of pulls it taut a little bit and goes, It's actual wearable material. That would be interesting to see. Someone who doesn't look like they're dressed like me. Anyway, I must be off. Good luck on your ventures. You as well. Take care. And he trots off with the donkey. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, very. Uh, remind me really quickly. We picked him up, same as everybody else. He already had his items on him, right? That is correct. Aye. And we know we didn't see them on the roads north and south, so... Hang on. And he kind of pulls out a small version of the map that he's been updating as we've been traveling. There was a road that headed out uh, west from... Oh, Mark's actual notes breaking. What the frick? It was, was Quincunx is Quincunx. what it was called. That's the one. Uh, from Quincunx. You think maybe it's over there? I mean, it, it might be. If we end up deciding to 
somehow take Coleco's quest? That's, I'm that's a really long way away. Allow me to save you some time, gentlemen. We are not visiting the Ogre Wives. All right, all right, that's fine, that's fine. Slowly puts map away. <laughs> it is at this point you find yourselves in front of the large kind of... It, it almost looks intendedly made to look older, antique-looking building with the tower on the side, which at, upon um, a closer inspection appears to be like a little model, almost like a little mock of what appears to be a lighthouse, a very old style lighthouse. Oh, what a fucking vibe this place is, man. <laughs> <laughs> is it made out of like marble or sandstone or is it just it's, brick? Like everything? It seems to be made out of the same white stone that you've seen the kind of brick buildings made out of. It seems to have been masoned out of this area. Okay. Um, the top of it definitely seems to be not like it's... It's not so much neglected as it is clearly not as well maintained as an actual lighthouse would be. Um, so there's no light coming out of it, and it's just kind of a, basically just a large show-off structure. Gotcha. Sick. Uh, are there guards or anything around here? You do notice there are two land guards currently stationed, uh, both of which are Triton. Um, one appears to be kind of a thin triton with kind of a sort of, um, wide gate face, um, and large eyes. The other one is, like, got, like, bubble eyes, and they're kind of looking forward, and he's much more puffy. Um, and they are currently holding spears and are kind of guarding the front door as you approach. Guys, just taken aback by the guy whose eyes are bigger than his own head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, gentlemen I will turn and look immediately uh, we have business with the admiral is he in he is yes yes we were sent on behalf uh, not, not on behalf of on the recommendation of Oslamir Harland very well we may enter Thank you. And then we stab them on our way in. Oh, no! No one expects dude, a Spanish Inquisition. Dude, Bubble Eye Fish Man was going to retire two days from now. Oh my god, oh, he's shit. going to die! <laughs> he's definitely dead now. He's fucking I, dead, dude. <laughs> I wonder if Odez would eat him. I thought he was going to spit death gas at me Not like good. the Elden Ring. <laughs> oh my god. All right, as you guys enter inside, the first thing that hits you is the smell. It smells like museum in here, but, like, not nice museum. Like, that's, you know, well-balanced. Like, well-balanced? I'm, I'm, I, this is a museum because I want to excuse my hoarding sort of museum. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Uh, so it's like, it's like musty it. as fuck in here. It is very musty, yeah. Not, not at all like my museum. Uh, thrown into Gateway Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> as you enter inside, um, it is stacked with paper, books, parchment, and you see people moving about in this space, almost like an office building, um, with various different desks all discussing, and you just hear, like, just chatter incessantly. As you turn and look inside of a room, it is just a large open parlor with, like, five desks with five different people dressed really nicely, currently speaking to what looks to be sailor captain types or individuals who are, like, getting gold balanced out. It is... It's like Coleco's trading workshop without objects. It's with money and money only and papers being swapped around consistently and it is just stacked with paper in here. Any maps? Uh, there are some maps hanging on the wall. Very similar to the ones that Osmir Harlan had hanging. There also appears to be a map of Martorallo uh, hanging above, uh, behind a individual. Uh, who is currently hidden from view in a just a massive stack of papers at the moment. I'm gonna just sort of gravitate in the general direction of ye olde Martorallo map. Okay. 
as you kind of gravitate towards, you see currently a very, very small little pufferfish triton woman wearing like a little sweater with little glasses kind of sitting, kind of working on an abacus and setting it aside and like pulling out some books that are just like twice the size of her and putting it on the table and flipping it open. And as you approach looking up at the map, she turns and goes, oh, hello, can I help you? Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. I just, uh, I was looking at the map here. Yes, the map of Monterolo. Yes, it's a very nice place, is it not? Uh, yes, is it? Is it current? I believe it is current, yes. Uh, would you mind if I just jotted down some notes here real quick? Um, I, who are you? Uh, sorry, <laughs> uh. My name is Iskan Sitlali. I'm a, a bit of a cartographer. I see. She kind of looks at the rest of the entourage. Uh, the rest of us are here on business with the Admiral. Oh, oh Master uh, Copperbottom. I see, I see, I see. Um, if you are looking for a map, I might recommend the Moonstone Alley has a cartography store, if that is up your interest. Scan is gone. Just like instant blink, she's there. Uh, well, I, yeah, I, I heard about that. It's just this one is, it's really well made. Like kind of getting defensive, it kind of stands up and places a finned hand, like both finned hands covering. Like, it also was mine. You made this? No, I purchased it. Oh. Uh. Right. Sorry to bother you. You have business with the master? Yes, we were hoping we could speak with him. Certainly, I can take you there. And you watch she hops off, and then you just realize how short she is. She is like Edna Mode short. <laughs> oh my god, um, my height? <laughs> yeah, she's about your height. She's actually smaller than you as well, and she kind of... I want you to imagine those yellow pufferfish with the most, like, aghast expression. It's basically <laughs> that on a body with glasses in front of it. <sighs> um, and she kind of shuffles with her hands kind of clasped in front of her. She kind of leads you out back to the main hall, eventually to a very large set of double doors. This is the master's office. Well, thank you for that. Thank you very much, madam. And you watch as she kind of looks over and she scribbles something on a piece of paper and she hands it off to you, e scan uh, I will take it. <laughs> Meet me out back Plus... at the five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, the pistols at dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the back of the Denny's parking lot for, for a knife fight. Um, Beyblade battle. It's like a, it's like almost like a code, almost like a, like a series of numbers and letters. And she goes, that is my map. If you wish for a similar one, you may get one at shop. It is in a series. You may buy, purchase it forthwith, but I'm not giving you mine because it's mine. Right. No. Um, yeah. Thank you. Mm. And she like shuffles away. God, I'm getting Miss Puff vibes from this. Barkles, dirty barkles. <laughs> Six. Ooh, thousand. What? <laughs> she just sp splurts out a little bit of water on her way out. Oh. Uh, well, guess we need to go find the crown witness. <laughs> also, after you then. Very well. Come in! Oh. I open the door. You open the door, and as you open the door, the back of the door hits something, and you watch as just like papers just full, like just like co like slide on the ground from a pile, just like a, a stack of magazines being shoved over. It just kind of slides onto the floor. This room oh. is filled, floor to ceiling, with books, papers, all manners of things, and in the center is a very large desk that is almost framed, and currently sitting behind it, looking up from a large. A exaggerated ostrich feather pen is this gentleman. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Also, I am already on the floor scooping those papers up and trying to put them back into their proper place. Oh, poor Otho. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Look at this Whoa, fucker. Friend. Dude! What you a see lad. a this very. Dude's forehead is extreme. <laughs> <laughs> you see a rather large, rotund, 
triton with a bulbous forehead that comes out like a beluga whale. He's got these large jowls and his scales are like a crimson red with sort of pink that runs back with his fin. He wears like the the admiral style shoulders with the tassels and a sort of uh, golden buttoned top that runs down. And you notice as he kind of looks up to you, he's got this massive underbite with these very large teeth and sort of a small nose. And as he turns to you, he goes, Well, what can I help you with today? Ah, yes. Sorry about the mess. Ah, it's pish posh. Don't worry about it. It happens every day. <laughs> I'll just I'll just put them neatly back on the stack anyway. Uh, let me introduce myself, my lord. Uh, I am... Otho Valentinius. Ah, you're Brutus's boy. Nice to see you. You've grown so much since the last time I saw you. <laughs> yes, well, thank you, sir. Um, we are here on a bit of business, actually. Is your father seeking something? A new dock, perhaps? Um, mayhaps uh, uh, a new prison expansion for his most dastardly of enemies? I, well, no, actually, we are not on business for my father. We are here of our own accord, actually. I see. We are seeking the use of possibly one of your ships. Uh, there is, was something precious lost in the wreckage uh, of one belonging to Oslomir Harland, and we were hoping we could charter a ship to get it back. I see, and I assume that Master Harland has not sent you here without a missive, yes? Of course, and I'll, I'll fumble through my uh, my coat and I'll hand it off to him. Add he it takes to the it. avalanche of papers. Yeah, he takes it, and it is, it is a dwarf compared to just the stacks of paper that he's currently surrounded with. And as he reaches out and takes it, he's a very large man. Um, he takes it and very quickly pulls out a letter opener that is, like, got this, like, dolphin motif on the other end of it, and he kind of just runs it across, gently places it. It's so old hat. He pulls out a letter, quickly folds it, and kind of looks at it and goes, There's, uh, see, like, these very young people are just sporting, and the uh, ship investment will charter any mission. Is, uh, oh, I see, I see. So you are some young go-getters. Ah, excellent. Good to see the youth stepping up and taking on missions nowadays. Um, hmm. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, hmm, I'm not one for many sloops in my uh, platoon of swords. I tend to prefer the larger and more touristy, slow-moving vessels, you see. I'm quite old in my age, but um, I would be able to perhaps spare a skiff, but I would, would ask for some uh, assistance in exchange, of course. It seems to be a theme. Uh, what could we assist you with, my lord? Well, it has been detailed in this letter, you see. Ah, see. As a sign of goodwill from yours truly, as Ozemir Harlan says that your matter is uh, separate from his own. Uh, I, I can see why he does not wish to get involved. As a, I mean, a lost ship at sea is always um, difficult to manage. Of course. The rest of you may answer. I, I do not bite. Come oh, in. I, I, I assume we, we went oh, in yeah. already. Oh, yeah, no, we walked in. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And I might have motley bunch amongst you are all so young and, and uh, fry paste, as it were. He's going to sort yeah. of like all of his papers and stuff. He's clutching desperately close to him. He doesn't want to lose <laughs> any of it in in this place because it'll be oh, gone it's, forever. It's a sea of papers. You don't even know what the floor looks like. You can't even <laughs> see it. Hmm. You also notice behind Gus Brind are the, I hate to say it, the ugliest children you've ever seen. Um, oh. <laughs> framed behind him. You know, young little girl with the same <laughs> giant bulbous thing going on. And he kind of strokes his chin and he goes, oh, Well, I was recently going to hire some adventurers to help me with a bit of um, a bit of a, a strange going about as of late, but that's no pressing matter, but um, I could perhaps incur it to you if you wish. What trial what do you have us do? 
Well, uh, there was a little one going to say there, young man. You Can you move I'm... away behind the, the directories? I can't see you very well. Uh, sorry, it, 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 he just, like, runs into a column that's taller than him. <laughs> I'll I'll go, like, grab, like, a stool or a chair or something and prop Milo up on it. It's, it's, it's fine. I was just going to ask for the details as well. Ah, oh, certainly, certainly. Um, you see, uh, there was a lighthouse in Point Prim. Um, I recently sent a team, a repair team, to go and replace the lenses on the lighthouse, as we do every uh, few years or so. Um... But, um, the repair team never returned, and I believe them to be waylaid at sea, perhaps. Uh, so I, I, I sent a letter to the mayor of Point Prim, uh, inquiring about the whereabouts of my repair team, and he claimed that they went inside the lighthouse and had never left the lighthouse. Point Prim? Indeed, yes. And where would that be exactly in relation to Matarallo? Do you happen to have a map on your person? Mr. Seat Lolly? <laughs> uh. Y- yeah. Uh. I don't really have any place to put it. I think I put it on my desk. We make room. You guys will see, like, his eyes are vibrating with concern as he very slowly, probably slower than you've ever seen him pull out his map. Uh, pulls out his map and places it down you on the table, and the he gravitation- doesn't take his hands off of it. You feel the gravitational pull of all the paper below, just like screaming out like a howling abyss, swanning, "Join us! Join us!" <laughs> the hungry jaws the of the back. paper. As you his walk jaws, over, like, clenched really tight. <laughs> As you walk, you just, like, it's almost like, you know when you're slowly walking towards a boss in a video game and, like, rooms are crumbling around you, like, cinematically? (laughs) It's just an epic Latin choir singing in the background. (laughs) Like, piles of paper are falling over in your wake, and he just doesn't seem to care too much. Eventually, you reach the table where there's just, like, a stack of letters that have been set aside, and you place the map on the table, and he leans over, um, and he goes... Oh, this is rather well to excellent penmanship, I must say, young man. Uh, thank you. Let us see. And you watch as he pulls out his own quill and begins to actually very quickly draw on your map. And he is going to reveal this. Oh, dang. Oh, shit. Oh, you okay, Connor? Away. I got pulled away for a second. The camera moved by itself. Ghosts. Hold on. I just got to make sure dang. something's hidden real fast. Ghost? Alright, it is. That is a long haul. Yeah, that's sure quite a bit away. Back to Kunk, that's for sure. Ooh. Oh my. Uh, Point Prim is right here. And you watch as he writes down the name. That is nine days travel one way. <laughs> hmm. Alternatively, you could uh, charter a boat as well. It's 11 days to Quincunx for comparison. And we don't know where... uh, Mm. We don't know where Odez wanted us to go, technically. In hindsight, we should have asked that. Uh, Hmm... It would be um, about ten days by land or four days by boat. Four days by boat? That's not bad. That's actually mm. not bad and probably a little bit safer if we don't go too far out to sea. I- I've heard there were undead sailors and pirates. That uh, seems to be the case, yes. They tend to come up shore, but they have been known to cling to vessels. Um... Oh, he kind of shrugs. <laughs> not as safe as it used to be, no. I mean, I'll be fair. Uh, guys, I don't know about you, but it sounds like a nice adventure to get on a boat. I've never been. Just out of curiosity, Admiral, uh, the people you sent to Point Prim, you said they went missing. Have you have you contacted the, the land guard about this? Um, there are no land guards stationed in Point Prim, unfortunately. They're a rather uh, small 
community of individuals, of fishermen specifically. But surely some people under your employ going missing warrants at least an investigation. That is precisely why I intended to hire in adventures of my own regard. As this lighthouse is without the jurisdiction of the land guard, it is my responsibility to see it done. Ah, I see. The land guard is not guaranteed throughout Montorallo. If anything, it is more of a baboon than it is a promise. And how long... Sorry, does it seem like he's searching for an excuse, or... (laughs) No, he seems like he's telling you as it is. Okay. And how long ago were they supposed to report back to you? Uh, about, I'd say, 20 or so days ago, perhaps um, a few 20? months. A few, a, f- a few months ago. Wow. <laughs> Above game, because <laughs> I'm not going to say it in character... But Iskan is definitely having that thought process of like, yeah, I can imagine someone who lives like this would have a hard time keeping track of how much time has passed since something was supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and in that time, you've heard nothing back from them or the neighboring. I received a letter from the mayor recently stating that the men went in but did not come out. The lighthouse itself was working just fine, which to me tells me that there is someone clearly manning it, but um, it's a rather strange affair, as it were. So they weren't ambushed on the way back? I thought as much, but it did not seem to be the case. Odd. I have a question. Yes, my young violet friend. Oh, thank you. Um, I can't help but notice that there's another what looks like city on the way there. What location is that? Ah, that is Azarir. What is Azarir's, uh, I suppose, uh, manner of trade, or what town does that do? They man, oyster, they man oyster farms, man-made oyster farms. Guys, his eyes roll in the back of his head. What the fuck is an oyster? They're like small, uh, small tiny fish that live inside of a shell. They're they're called mussels. So, guys, you, yeah, you whoa, know, whoa, 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 muscles, you say? Mussels. I didn't spell the word, but yes. The, the ocean. Co- the ocean. Okay, you know what? It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's a stupid joke. Don't, don't, don't mind me. Go ahead. It, 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 the, the joke's gone. All right. So we have our options. Well, Admiral, we've, uh, to be perfectly transparent, we've uh, visited with a few other ocean lords, and we were given similar tasks. Uh, yours is quite similar. the in- similar, you yes. Mean other people have gone missing in lighthouses, and I have not been informed of this matter. Well, well no, um, oh. just other tasks given to us by some of the other ocean lords, um, not related to lighthouses or missing people. Um, I imagine not. It would have to go through me, and if I had missed some sort of channel, well, who would I to say that I'm the ocean lord of infrastructure now? <laughs> yeah, and indeed, indeed, sir. Uh, nonetheless, we need to consider our options and our time frame. So, if it would be all right with you, I'm going to convene with my fellows, and uh, we will get back to you shortly. Certainly, and if I do not see you again, please send my regards to your father. Of course. Of course. Good day to you, gentlemen. Good day, Andrew. Good day, sir. Milo runs into another stack of papers. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. like a ball pit, but instead it's paper. Paper pit. Oh, that, that hurts even more. Pets. Would that I could. This entire room is one fucking, like, towering Jenga of paper. 
Dude, it's like, for, for East Gun, it's like that scene in Ace Ventura when he walks into the trophy room. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just has that massive mental breakdown and steps out and is like, what a wonderful room of death you have. <laughs> <laughs> Take care now. Bye-bye then. <laughs> All right, so I guess we go outside. Sorry. Yeah. Well, gentlemen. At this point, as you guys exit outdoors, it is starting to reach sunset at this point. Well, should we find a place to stay for the night and talk it over and then? Yes. Did they, uh, did they want our an did they want our answers now above game? Like did they want it like today? No, nope, is that your earliest convenience? And, okay. Uh, yeah. Winterwit flies off of the roof of the building and lands on top of your head, Milo. Oh. Oh, there you are. Hello. All right, so it's getting late. We're going to go find a place to stay and talk it over. Why are you trying to find it? Ozemir Harland offering his home to you. That is right. Uh, you, you have to forgive us. It's it's so rare that we've been given accommodations on our travels. It almost yes. feels like a second nature. We've been on the road for a while, and having an actual place to stay is... Change your pace. Um baths and warm beds and all. You do smell significantly better and I mean that with the most polite words I can muster. No offense taken. It won't be long until that's changed. Mm. And when it does we'll have to seek out a bath again. We will? I would hope so. I'm going to. I don't see why. Well, I certainly don't want to smell you. Wow. What? I just shrugs. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we should head back and uh, discuss our options. Just for the sake of brevity. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're there now! You guys, make your way back to the ocean's pinnacle and are immediately met with a fine spread of hams, turkey, mashed potatoes, um, sautéed carrots in caramel sauce oh with God. all manner of fruits and vegetables, breads, crusty, flaky... Uh, biscuits and all manner of other drink. There's fine wine, and I am talking fine wine, Otho. This is Ocean Lord <laughs> yep, wine. Just, just got the Virgil motivated eyes. <laughs> huh. As well Monty. as, mm hmm. I would like to say this on behalf of everyone that's going to see this on YouTube, everyone in the chat, and all the podcast people. How fucking dare you right now? <laughs> that sounds delicious, and you're ruining all of us. So yeah. from all of us to you, I still need curse dinner, you. So thanks for that. Ha 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 ha. As you sit down, uh, there, are also, <laughs> there are also other spirits. There's freshly squeezed orange juice along oh. with water, with ice, uh, as well as uh, other spirits. There's some very nice light um, hops ale um, that is also provided. And uh, Osmir Harland is also there at the head of the table, currently drinking wine and eating uh, some of the ham uh, as Winterwit more or less reports on what happened upon your leaving, missing out the details of your actual encounters with the Ocean Lords. Ale. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> Reaches oh, yeah. for it. Reaches for it. It's in, like, a like a silver <laughs> stein as well, so it's, like, real fancy and tastes real good. Mm. It's light and hoppy and is just, it's just perfect. Hugs it down in one gulp. So, it sounds to me, Ozemir Harlan begins, you have a diplomatic mission, a dungeon, or a mystery. I will not lie. The missing repairmen at the lighthouse have me quite intrigued. Yes, but it's also... Presumably the furthest away, and as we outlined already, not gonna supply us with the best ship or the best crew. 
That is worth taking into consideration, yes. While I will not find myself speaking for the affairs of another ocean lord, uh, Coleco is somewhat reliable in the promises he provides. If my letter detailed you needed a sloop, he would be willing to provide it. If not, he would not have offered you any job whatsoever. Milo, Milo's just, like, stuffed with ham. <laughs> I, I, I think I just want to go to the dungeon. It sounds Swal like a good time. Swallow your food, Mr. Brightbeam. I yeah. am somewhat aware of Red Jesse. He is um, part of Winona Odez's um, uh, ship crew, more in the sense that he has his own vessel. Um... And given Winona's eclectic and rather strange nature, any sort of mutiny or self-governing I leave to her jurisdiction, much less I incur that young woman's wrath. I may be biased in thinking this. Not only the idea of the fact that it's a dungeon, and I, can, I would say that I am curious at that matter. Though... I guess I would be biased in saying that a sorceress or a, a witch, as all those call her, she is, a, she is a sorceress. Do not call her a witch to her face, but well, the sort of magic that she that airs about her is somewhat familiar, but also kind of comforting to me. But of course, as I've said, that's biased. Well, East, East Ken, would you like some more water? Uh, sure, thanks. He kind of pulls and pours you more water and sets it aside. Uh, I was gonna say, if we're looking at it, you know, completely objectively, our best ship comes potentially, uh, by means of, uh, my god. My brain does not want to hold on to names today. Uh, we know Coleco. now? Oh. Our, our best ship comes from Coleco, but uh, that doesn't seem like everyone's favorite mission. He kind of side-eyes Otho. He, he our, meets his gaze with you while just swirling wine in the glass. Our potentially worst, and I don't mean that in an insulting way, but our potentially worst ship option comes by way of a mission that would require us to take another ship if we don't want to waste nine days to get there for a mystery in a town that doesn't have a guard. And then right in the middle, we have Ocean Lord Odez, which kind of seems to be the best of both worlds. We get a good ship and a good crew. And you guys seem keen on that mission. As much as it invokes Otho's ire, there is a part of me that is curious about the whole rather diplomatic ogres. Yeah, I was kind of curious about that too, but, uh, well, it, it is the longest journey. Which... And I'll be honest, coming to this town and seeing the ocean for the first time in my life, I'm going to be honest with you all. I don't want to go back to the mainland just yet. I think we're forgetting another stipulation with Coleco's offer. If we were to accept that one, my brother could not accompany us. Oh, right, human. Oh. I yeah, don't forget. It's fine. You know, it's fine. I'm used to it. No, it's just I totally forgot that that was one of the stipulations. Sorry. So that leaves us with Winona and Gus Brand. Should we put it to a vote? Aye, then. All in favor of Miss Odez's request, say aye. 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 
All in favor of Gus Brund, say aye. Aye. Well, uh, democracy I wins yet again. I, I, I think Koi is abstaining. I think that's what's called. Kai, uh, all's on your turn, to you, Kai. What are you doing? Bosco? Uh, vote's already done, but yeah, I'm doing the thing Milo said. All right, then. We've got our votes, and I think we have our adventure. Democracy wins yet again. Winter Wit, and he, he watches all of your turns to the pseudo dragon. In the morrow, do you mind sending a message to Miss Odell's? Winter Wit kind of nods. I will notify her that you are wishing to accept her mission, just to save you an additional trip. I figure tomorrow you wish to supply and make your way out to discuss more with her. Yes? Uh, Good. Yeah. The more information, the better. We definitely need to figure out where we're going. <sighs> kind of forgot to ask about that last time. Do you wish for me to withhold sending a message to her? I don't think that'd be much of a problem. Just I, so... I, I, I feel like above game, do we want to just like have it be put here just like hey can we get like info about like where on this map we're going yeah well if it's something that we have to reach by sea she'll let us know too so um, I'm I... fine with I'm fine with getting this on the way yeah. I could send a messenger if you wish it may cost me a bit of money but I could send one Uh, I mean, or I could just go tell her ferryman. I, I would not recommend traveling alone at night at this hour, especially individuals such as yourselves. Okay. I'll, it's a I'll... it's a big city, Iskan. It, it could get kind of dangerous. Well, I guess we'll pay you back then. There's no need. I have uh, messages at my beck and call. It's a, it's a pittance. Save your money for the things you're uh, supposed to buy tomorrow. All right. So, Winona Odez and a mysterious dungeon. Hmm. Part of me, for your own well-being, wishes that perhaps this individual is lying, though his fate is grim indeed. But, for curiosity's sake, I kind of hope that he's telling the truth. What do you think of it? I think it would be interesting to unearth any kind of artifact or information. It is intriguing, and perhaps it would even lead us to a clue on following up on a different lead that we've picked up back in, uh, not Matiamond, it was Roscoe Air. Yeah, I was just thinking about that, too. I, this whole thing reeks of some sort of treasure trove waiting to be found. Hmm. Well, oh, really good lie. Oh, a very good lie indeed, to save one's skin. That being said, keep your wits about you. Some things are better left forgotten. And that is where we're going to end the session for tonight. Oh! Hooray. Bye, Austin. Uh, quick, Bye, quick, point Austin. Of, quick point of order, just in case, if we are skipping to the morning when we come back, uh, Iskun would have given... <laughs> Kai, um, you're a staff overnight. We'll we'll continue the role play after dinner, so okay. don't no okay. worries there. Bye, Austin. Oh, Bye, thank Austin. Goodness. Bye, Austin. Again. Goodbye. Oh Fuck. gosh.
And we'll close out of the program. What? 15. What? 15. 15. Oh my god. I'm gosh. on a different computer, so I'm, I'm thrown off yep. here. It's 15. Six more. And Unexpectables 2. Unexpectables 2 is learning how to drive. <laughs> Are you sure? It might be following Monty's path. Okay, Damn. all right. You don't have to do that, man. <laughs> Well, Shahalam already did it. So well, if, if you're driving in the New York uh, map in, in uh, Mario All right, Kart, okay. Like, Listen, a doubling I, down no, is I, not... I fucking told you that it's coming back to bite you. <laughs> all right, all right. Well... So, Shay, Shay, if you're listening... We have fun. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Expectables. Mark Allen here. We have fun. We place. have fun here. I hope Shay's not are. asleep. I want to go home. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> no. sir. Stay in the night. I mean, I wouldn't mind staying too because I'll still have internet. But at the same time, I kind of want to go home so Monty, I can sleep in my bed. What about your cats? You are home. Okay, well, I already fed them. They're fine. <laughs> always been here, Monty. Hello. I've You've been, been here been the here. entire time. Monty, where's the industrious know. ferret? I oh shit, you're right. Sorry, I'm just exporting my file. Give me one second, I'll swap it over once it's done. What? The industrious ferret went to the disco. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. It's a ferret. He's so industrious. Is he a black-footed ferret, though? Sure. Yeah. Uh, also, I, <laughs> I, I think she is listening, based is off she? of the based off of the gifts and uh, the the bits and subs that I'm seeing right now. Uh -oh. <laughs> she tell me to shut up. Uh, no, she was just gifted a sub. Oh, nice. All right. Well, uh, guess we can go around the horn. Uh. Bosco, where can they find you and what are you up to? Uh, you can find me at Ed Bosco VA on both Instagram and Twitter. I'm right here on twitch.tv slash Ed Bosco. All right. And Guy time. Woo! New Pretty world PB. Pretty some PB. I'm just uh, at the top of my game right now. Oh, yeah. Mm, Gaijin Goomba, where can they find you? And what oh, you, you know to? where to find me, but I'll tell you what, I am taking that big uh, video break in September, but I'm going to be streaming probably a lot more because I find it a lot of fun and really enjoyable. Going to be a lot of build streams, a lot of indies coming out. Zito, I will have to talk to you about that later because I need some good leads. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to be enjoying my September. Uh, it, it, it is my birthday month after all, so that's going to be my little gift to me, so I don't go crazy. Nice. Dad, All right. You. What are you doing? Mark Allen Jr., when you're not inquiring what Bunny is up to, where can they find you <laughs> and what are you up to? You can find me on Twitter.com at Mark Allen Jr., here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming, and you can help me figure out what my fat sleepy cat Bunny is doing <laughs> over on Instagram at Chonk for Life. Uh, no stream tomorrow. Um, as I said, I have some stuff to do, and I will be playing some Digiman card games with some fellow local nerds. Yeah. Um, but we'll be back on Saturday. Um, not sure just yet what I will be doing. It may be more Digimon Survive, or we may finally pick up that Sonic 06 stream uh, that I've meant to pick up the last couple of streams, but had to change. Due been to conveniently not day. doing it. Oh, how, what a shame! You don't have to play Sonic 06. <laughs> oh no! Uh, but I'm so oh, close no. to being done with Sonic Story, so I want to play it. You have one story done out of what six? Three. Mm. There's only three in that game. Yeah, there's only three in that game. Where'd you get six from? Uh, I thought Sonic Adventure. Of... Yeah, it's probably where yeah, I got it from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 AKA a vastly superior game. You're not wrong, but it doesn't have silver in it, so. You know. But it has the Chow Garden, so it, it automatically does. wins. It does. It's about the to say, ball of the no, Sonic Adventure game. No, I was about no. to say playing Jax is a better experience than that freaking game. Look, you don't have to hate my entire childhood. Uh, anyway, that's me. Uh, I, can, I can show you better games, Mark. <laughs> 
All right, Zito, where can they find you, and what are you up to? Twitch.tv slash Zito. Uh, CZ Backlash on Twitter. Uh, I'm doing a lot of shit. My uh, Patreon got a huge update because I'm now working my comic into it. So if you want pay, uh, comic pages uh, before it actually goes out uh, on Tapas, you can support my Patreon and you'll check it out there. Uh Indie games will happen whenever Cards gets updated to 1.6, or if it actually has fixed its netcode bullshit, I'll play that soon. Uh, I, for the life of me, I can't remember what else I'm doing. That's how many things I'm doing, so please check out the card uh, that I posted in chat. It'll take you to everything I'm doing all at once. Oh, shit. Should make myself a card. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, I, I see someone post in the chat, you, you posted the Almanac in there. I changed the name of it, it no, it's no longer that, so that link is broken. It's now Patreon slash Zito is Nito. It's not Ever Ingot Almanac anymore. Ah. So that that's well, why go. that's busted up. Fair enough. Yeah, the, the link will 404 if you go to the old one. Alrighty. So don't do it! Don't get lost in the sea of digital goop. Yeah, Click we on the new link. title, too. Yeah, we're getting some, don't worry. We'll get there, yeah. Uh, well, while you're worrying about episode titles, where can they find you and what are you up to, Monty? Oh my god, you can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Uh, my internet is down. Uh, it's estimated to be down for like uh -huh. the next potentially three days. Uh -huh. uh, so, streaming might unfortunately be not happening. I may or may not take art commissions, possibly. Just to give me something to do, because um, if not, then I got no internet, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be far. It's, it is not Spectrum. I do not have Spectrum. Um, they don't but exist in Canada. Like they do not exist in Canada. So um, thank you, huge thank you to my friend Shay, who I yelled at just a little while ago um, yes. for letting me run in her house. You and her family. Unexpectables. Yeah, and her family that was okay with me yelling in her house. Um, thank you so much I for lending me this, because I, I honestly really, really, really wanted to play today, and I'm really glad we did. Um, but yeah, you can find me at, on twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Usually Thursdays we're doing Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but if my internet's not fixed, we're not doing it. Uh, and then, uh, Sunday, hopefully, should be more Majora's Mask. I really want to get back into that now that I've uploaded the file. So, Yeah. Alrighty. And they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Be sure to check out my DMs Guild, where I'm releasing 5th edition subclasses, including the... Uh... Uh... Oh, God. Brain farting. Um, the Treasure Hunter Conclave for the Ranger, uh, which I am working on currently. Uh... Yeah. And uh, one one last time, even though uh, I think I believe officially our our code yeah. is now invalid. Uh, I'd like to thank Die Hard Dice for uh, sponsoring us for all of these episodes up until this one. We're gonna figure out uh, if we can get a new code. We got a lot of shifting around. That's mm -hmm. happening over on the Die Hard Dice side. So we're going to keep you updated. Uh, head on over to our Twitter at underscore unexpectables underscore to get more information on what will be happening on the Die Hard Dice side of things. Uh, but yes, uh, we'll, we'll see about getting you guys a new code sometime soon. Don't know if it's going to be before the next episode, but we'll keep you posted. Um, uh, also, a special shout out to Diana, who we yes, mentioned earlier is we love you. We love you, Diana. Is no longer going to be with us, so we'll still use her name to strike fear into all of you, and it'll <laughs> still be a meme. She's always watching chat. We always. we did we did uh, we were told to get in contact. There's a spider on that wall. Sorry, um, we were told to. Oh, it fell. Oh no. Um, we were told to get into contact with a, um, some other individuals, and one of them has a very great name. <laughs> I really <laughs> hope we get to talk about them, but 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Diana. Um, we retweeted her farewell message, so give her some good words and some, you know, some love because she worked really, really hard. All right. Uh... Um, I really hate to be that person, but Shay does need to drive me home. Um, okay. And seeing as how Connor, you were streaming on your side. Yeah. Um, would you guys be okay if I head out? I'm very sorry to do sure so, thing. but this is kind of a unique yeah, situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the first I, time ever. I'm happy uh, about this. I know, I know. So you guys get to pick the episode title. Try and try and write some down there. Sure thing. Um, uh, and also, episode once again, huge, huge episode. thank you to Zeus Draws, who drew all the Ocean Lords. Yeah. yeah. Um, Timberbottom he, looks dope. Oh yeah, I, I he sent me like the progress. I'm like, no, give him more jowls. He needs more jowls. <laughs> Don't make <laughs> yeah. him look cool. More weird face. Begin. <laughs> um. So thank you so much, Zeus Draws. There's only one Ocean Lord that you have not seen. So, uh, and I have the art of. Um. So, uh, yeah. No, that's that's gonna be really really fun. But I'm gonna head out. I will hopefully right. see everybody next week for our next episode yeah. where you guys are going to go and deal with Winona's mission, which is very fun. That I get to prepare for. depends on your not Spectrum situation. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, hopefully it'll be resolved. Otherwise, hey, Shay, thank you for Aww. next week, too. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Take care, guys. Have fun right. with the rest of the stream. We'll see you later. Bye. -bye. Don't get Connor, blessed on your way home. Yes. Connor, you better not use the soundboard when I leave. Gotcha. I definitely won't. Okay, and 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 grab your favorite episode suggestions, guys. Yeah, so definitely. Oh, awesome. we will. Don't you don't you worry, Monty. You have a great rest of your night. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. She's probably she's probably watching the stream on her phone. <laughs> Disrespect your surroundings. <laughs> Open this panel. <laughs> I've become so numb. Whoa, wait, well, hold on. No. Why did you go to Lincoln? Right. I'm just <laughs> expecting a fart, like not a new <laughs> album. Jeez. Um, <laughs> there it is. We do it. Oh. <laughs> I think we have right. some bits in soon. We certainly yeah, do. Soon. We certainly do. Uh, let's see. Where did I leave off? Da, 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 da. Uh, let's go with. Oh, it was. Uh, oh God. Oh, I remember this. It was yep, the. It was the question about DMing. I think. Yes. I forget who said it, but they were asking about railroading and main characters. Uh... Yeah. I think that one might have... Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, all right. Oh, so, perfect. Lasume the Robot. Thank you for the 200 bits. So, how long until Kai starts to look like... Oh, no, we read that one as well. Um, That Panda Guy. Thank you for the 1,000 bits. Quick, Bosco, what movie is this from? Wise man say, forgiveness is divine, but never, fa never pay full price for late pizza. That is from the Ninja Turtles movie. Correct. Which one? The first the one. First one. The, the first one. Yeah. Guys, it's the first one. Boss, it's the first one. Whoa, team. hang on a second. Yeah, I said it. That was The second one hard. had Super Shredder and Go Ninja, oh, Go Ninja, Go. get off. That, Go Ninja, that wasn't Go even Ninja, a fight. Go. That was we ran out of budget. Let's end the movie. But that guys, was Kevin you're Nash. You're forgetting about the girl Ninja Turtle. And he was wasted. Okay, that was dumb. That was dumb and you shouldn't have brought that up. Because I was right? No, I was talking to Mark. Oh, moving on. The girl Ninja Turtle never happened. <laughs> yeah, I Yaddle. ignored that. Um, it's a Yaddle situation. Moving on. Anyway. Indeed. Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 95 bits. Question, will Milo catch a sunfish before leaving Matarallo? Probably not. Jay! Jay, check out this freaking thing! We should call the Discovery Channel, Jay! It's a fucking Snorlax! <laughs> What the fuck is this thing? I think it's dead. Like a baby whale? You're just gonna do the whole video? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fun. It it's really so fun. Me. Thornton 6000, they give the 24 months. Wow, two years. Bell X, ah, thank you for the 28 months. 
Uh, Moss, thank you for the 10,000 bits. Wow. Hey guys, been a while since I've been able to catch you all live. I wanted to let you know that I became a dad a few days ago. Wow, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. You are a dad. You're a dad. Boogie, woogie, 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 woogie. Now embrace the dad bod. Super excited, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you all live again. Keep up the good work, guys. Well, if you can't, we'll see you in about I three understand. or four years when you're free. Yeah, yeah. four. <laughs> it's Eighteen, dude. Well, no, I figure like eventually they'll be able to watch themselves. Uh, like to boo one two three. Think of the one hundred bits episode title suggestion. Captain's accruement. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the Talbs, thank you for the bit. Episode title, Whatever Floats Your Boat. Ooh, I like that one. I like that one. I like that. Uh, like to be, uh, also gives a tier one sub to fan fur seeks new attention. That's Shay. Hey. Hey. King Shinrock, thank you for the tw uh, 16 months of Prime. Crit Scratch, thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, Anyway the Wind Blows. Ooh. I feel like that'd be good. good. I like that, but I feel like that would be better if, like, we actually get like deep into the mission first. Sure. Anyway, yeah, the yeah. Wind blows. yeah I sang really that in Japan. <clears throat> you sang that in Japan? Yeah, yeah World, World's Fair 2005. Ooh, cool. Uh. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> Callum draws like for the 50 bits. I caught that to the moon reference, Connor. Hey. 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 Uh, Zenlita, thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, Fair Winds. Eh. Eh. Callum draws, thank you for the 50 bits. Episode title, Wind in Our Sails. Also not Those bad. Those are all going to be good for when we actually start. Yeah, this that, that yeah. feels like yeah. when we actually take it. Whatever floats your boat is my favorite so far. So yeah, yeah, mine too. I, that one's that one's good. Lost to me the robot. Thank you for the two hundred bits. Episode title: Nautical Nonsense. Not yet. It's uh, something one, we wish. It's was, something we do wish. I was but waiting not yet. for it. Uh, was <laughs> wait? Was that a episode title in campaign one? I feel that it, it sounds familiar. It was. It's super. We'll was. have to look it up. There's no way it wasn't. Uh, I think it was when you met. Uh, Zenrio, actually. That sounds about that might right. Have been it. I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. Uh, completely lost track of where I was. Kane time, think of the 500 bits. Uh, my game got canceled, but I had an excellent fallback plan. Killer session. Uh, band a uh, Gia's time. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know what that right. means. Whatever you say, Gaz, Kanye. Gaz21, thank you for the 10... Uh, sorry, 21, thank you for the 10 bits. Episode title, These are the Ocean Lords. Also, here are the rules for Milo. One, he must have wisdom saves on rings. Two, if he's fallen, he turns into a seam ghoul. That's a very large episode what? title. <laughs> what? That, that was a, that was a <laughs> bunch of attempts that's, at Lord of the Rings references. That's one of those, references. like... <laughs> I wish I was not so powerful in this life, so I will be winter yeah, that's in the, the next. Yeah, the anime title. <laughs> is, is, <laughs> that's is the this, anime title. Is this like the, the fucking Fallout Boy of Unexpectables episode titles? It's the oh, Isekai Christ. episode. Uh, oh my god. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> wow, I can't believe my luck reincarnated as an ocean lord. <laughs> <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. It's It's... Oh god, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a very telling reference here, but it's like it's like Homestuck movie posters where they explain the entire plot of the movie on the poster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I do kind of got to step out as well. Is that I, all right? I do it. Yeah, go I for have, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm in charge now. Soon as well. Uh, all right, right well, have fun, guys. Get out of here then. <laughs> Goodbye. Good sat. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Good oh, I'll catch you, I'll catch you guys around. Sorry, I can't stay. Bye, Zito. Have a bye. bye. Good set. Oh, okay. A bunch of losers. Good Can't session. believe this. Yeah. It's all right. We got the real crew here. We got me. And, and now they can't hear me do this. All right. Anyway. Uh, I didn't hear you do it either. Uh, so. Darn. Yeah. Well, it's because my microphone's not connected to voice mod on here. Well.
But it was the loud, it was a loud fart that went. Oh, dang. Missed it. Yeah. Uh, it. Dice Ruler, thank you for the 200 bits. Can't wait to see Otho and Kai's mother. Ooh. How fucking dare you? Wow. Well, off to visit your mother. <laughs> uh, We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Zen Leader, thank you for the 100 bits. Episode title, Whatever Floats Your Goat. That's also pretty good. Uh, and finally, Kane Time, thank you for the 500 bits. Episode title, Navigating Our Choices. Not hmm. bad. I, I I I think I'm gonna have to give it to whatever floats your boat. Whatever floats your whatever floats your goat. Your your boat. I think your boat. boat. Okay, yeah. yeah, I like the boat one. Because the, the last the goat one, is, one a spoiler. is clever, but we want we don't want to give that moment away either. The spoiler. That was a good moment. All right. Well, can I make a, a raid suggestion? Sure. I would like to make a raid suggestion too, and then we, we can fight about it. We should raid LJ because it's their. We should raid day. LJ. Oh. Yeah, well, I fuck. thought I thought they weren't streaming. They are. They are. Oh they're shit! Streaming Which Spyro. means their back is feeling better, so we should yeah. all surprise them with let's a raid. Go, yeah. Them. Well, let's they're go. Well, let's go raid LJ anymore. So that's let's good. go raid LJ. They're, they're. I imagine they're going to be watching the episode later, so no spoilers, everybody. But yeah, they are currently playing through Spyro, but still no spoilers because they will definitely catch the episode later, so. Yeah, all right, we're gonna go raid. Great message, happy birthday. happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yay. Happy birthday is pretty good. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. There we go, happy birthday is our raid message. There it is, yeah. <laughs> thanks everybody. For yeah, giving thanks. them lots of love. Thanks for stopping by. We'll uh, and we will see you. Yeah, we'll see you Saturday, Saturday for Gateway. From Gateway. Saturday yeah. Gateway too. Yeah. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a goodbye. Bye.